By the way, spoilers. I keep forgetting to do this. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Oh, shishi. Shishi. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to Twofold Podcast. I'm Phil. Guess who's the host this week? <laughs> it's me. It's Phil, uh, your favorite host, obviously, by a landslide. So we're back on track with the best show ever on this uh, podcast. With me is Tim, my cousin and co host. Yes, I am. I agree. It's good to be here. Thank you. That's Phillips. great. I'm glad to hear that it's good to be here. And with me is my bro, my broski. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, uh, Jacob, the Brewski. That's right, Jake. You are my brother, and uh, Tim is my brother. But I'm not, <laughs> not going to say from, I didn't want to say that, but yep, Tim just had to put that in, I guess. And I think but, it's a funny, it's a funny thing. But hey, hey, welcome everybody to a new episode. This is episode six. Isn't that cool? We're already on episode six. Actually, really intriguing. Episode. Play six. the theme song. <laughs> what a great team, Tom Plim. <laughs> I want to do that as well. Did you, wait, 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 wait. Did team you have a Pom stroke? Plim. I had a stroke. Uh, I had a, a word, oh, what a word a great jumble. Team plum a tongue, a t- a t- a t- a <laughs> what a great song. I uh, never get so old. Tim Plum Plim. <laughs> and uh, let's Play get this the out of the way. Again. Yo, everybody, how are you feeling today? How are you okay. feeling? How were these two weeks? Really okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. I mean. Yeah. Since we were gone for two weeks, I mean, I know that whenever we upload something, people download it the first day. Uh, I think like that's hap- kind of how it's been going. I'm trying judging to remember by, what, what happened. Um, judging by what Jacob uh, keeps sending us, you know, Tim and Jake, oh, we have a mutual messages. You know, like um, yeah, group chat, chat room. Yeah, group chat like on that. you know on Apple products because we're <laughs> the Apple we're, product. On Apple we're, products. We're yeah. not the poor's. Oh. We're the rich. Hey, tomorrow is uh, iOS 13 <laughs> days, so that's oh, interesting. Wow. That's cool. And um, what we have is Tim <laughs> no and Jake. <laughs> Tim and Jake. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get to the point. I'm trying to get to the point. Tim and Jake usually send some kind of stats on how our episode is doing, and mm. I'm really so happy and grateful to see. Oh yeah, it's a business. That it's actually voice. quite consistent, you know? It's quite That's consistent. True. The charts say that it's quite consistent. These the charts days. say you know, there are people listening. So so hi That's people. The thing. Yeah, hi hello we, people. We don't see you, but we do see you in the numbers. It's and true. We you pop up in little little charts. Please <laughs> come say hi to us somewhere. We'd love to talk to you. We yeah. love that. I think interaction with the audience probably would help it and maybe, you know, word of mouth and stuff would spread it out. But anyway, let's get to the point of this podcast. And the point is, what are you mm. drinking today? <laughs> uh, yes. I let's just get that. it out of the That's way. That's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> Philip's in a train. <laughs> this train has no brakes. <laughs> <laughs> this train has no brakes, baby. Well, who wants to go first? Because I don't really have super interesting beers today. I can start. I can Good. start. Um, go for it. I, I, have, I have gone... To Scotland. By the way, what is it? Why is it? What 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 do you think is the most used, or like what is the most uh, uh, like impression that people usually do, and why is it Sean Connery? <laughs> Probably because it's because like his voice is very easy to recognize. But it, I, it, like, isn't it like you ask, like you meet some people and you're like, oh, Jeffrey's here. He's really good at impressions. Go oh. do one, Jeffrey. <laughs> There's about 99% chance this is going to be Sean Connery. This is always. Do you expect me to talk? And you're like, yeah. No, who, Mr. Bond? I expect <laughs> you to die. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, hush, 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 hush. I don't know how Sean Connery laughs. Anyway, uh, I went to Scotland. Neither, actually. For some classics. So I got some brew dogs today. Some brew dogs. Oof, oof, Got some brew dogs. You're brew the man dogs. now, brew dog. <laughs> brew dogs in the house. Oof, oof. Brew dogs are good. They're good, solid. Yeah, that's like. I guess they're like so big. They're like mainstream now. And some, I don't know. Yeah. But I still yeah. Like oh yeah. Well, well, what good. kind of brew dogs you got there, buddy? Uh, very mainstream. I got a. I got a movie pun one. Ooh, Ooh. thematic. <laughs> uh, it's called a uh, clockwork tangerine. <laughs> Uh, is this like a clockwork orange or what yeah 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 it's a citrus oh. session ipa does it have like clockwork orange imagery in a, on it it's or a anything dog, my friend there's no citrus imagery here it's just colors colors session. and text ipa api ipa um it's not what i expected it to be it's it's a little bit more flatter and more like 
Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. There's there's like a weird aftertaste. Let, let me have a sip again. And let me remind yes, myself. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. There's like a, like, I don't even know mm. what to, it's like a savory aftertaste. I don't know. It's like eating stew. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how else to Okay. Describe. That's a bit strange. That's like it's, eating it's stew. No, it's not like eating stew. It's like, it's, it's a savory aftertaste. I don't know. I wouldn't expect it from a citrusy thing, but whatever. It's just pretty good. It's orange, orange, orange can. I mean, tangerine can, whatever. That's my. Opinion. I unfortunately that sounds interesting. the can actually looks great. By the way, I mean, I like Brewdog's uh, design. Yeah, um, it's very nice, very nice. Uh, don't they always? Don't they make also like um, seasonal stuff? Is this be seasonal or no? Um, I'm not sure. Dude, this was new in the shop. Like specials. They have specials and standards. You know. Right, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. like the little shot baby thing that my brother bought, the little forty oh. percent alcohol one. Really, remember that? No, I don't remember that one. You were there, Philip. You were there. I'm, you, and I Jacob. might have been there. I might have been and there, Serbia, but I don't remember your it. now. Your forty percent. Yes. Well, you weren't there. Oh my! I, that might have been the first night you guys didn't arrive yet. Ah, oh, yeah, well, there you go. Remember, trying you brought some beers, but I don't remember Stan bringing beers. Oh, I guess we tried <laughs> all the first night. Yeah, yeah. There's like a little. He brought, it's like a tiny little bottle. I'll send you the picture of it, me holding mm. it. Because it was like, oh, this is for Agatha, you know, my daughter being born. So we have to drink Maybe this. Maybe the, like, the, our good dear listeners can also see this bottle. Yeah, yes. if, you, yes. if you are at all interested in these strange drinks that we drink, please. True. You know, I was thinking, guys, we need to do I'm not episode. super duper into it, but, you know, I'm here because I love these guys. <laughs> they, 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 give me, they give me great beer tips. We need to do okay. Go ahead. And speaking of which, I have something different today. I have. Okay. I do not have a beer. I have a alcoholic cocktail. <laughs> there you go. An alcoholic cocktail. It's called Blue Lagoon, and it tastes like ananas. <laughs> Blue Lagoon. Ananas. Did you ever have Blue Lagoon like a fish made? No. no, never, never. I never good. even tried it. I know I'm not first cocktail. Your story time. Story time. Long, long, okay. long time ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so back back when I was like eighteen, then and, and my wife now she was my girlfriend, but she was seventeen. I think it was like that. I think we had our one year anniversary. Ah, she's not here to, to correct me, but I think it was that. And then we used to live in a village, like a tiny seven thousand people village. And so we went on a special date. We went to Novi Sad, the city next oh, to us. We took a bus. And I think we went to a Chinese restaurant, which was which was funny because we were kids and we didn't know how to order stuff and everything. But we went to a Chinese restaurant. Oh. And, uh, and we ate it. It was good. And then we went to a bar with some drinks. And I had Blue Lagoon. <laughs> and, 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 and it was so much ice Blue and alcohol Lagoon. it was like ooh. and it was in the middle of the winter by the way so this icy cold bluey liquid yeah I still remember that today. it's not what, a really, really like, interesting though? story but <laughs> as like I the realized build up. a lot of build up and I thought there was something in the end of it but I don't remember what did it taste like though that's the big question that everyone's like summery about. drink I, th- I don't know what it's made out of like like I guess pineapple like fruity mm-hmm. ananas Oops, sorry. Ananas. So ananas. How's, how's the blue right. lagoon in the bottle? Yeah, it tastes fine. It tastes like ananas, which is but it's blue and it's nice. Pineapple. It's pineapple, of course. All you educated people would know. <gasps> Where? No. Who lives in? All right. So, okay. um, not just so like what I before we start, I just wanted to mention. <laughs> Who lives in a this is going to be of alcohol. <laughs> Arr! Well, my turn. Okay. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say that next episode we should drink gin and tonics do you guys like gin and tonics no i'm not a really tonic kind of but do you, do you know there's this new trend tonics. there's new trend I've never you should, tried you should, it you should try this jacob um okay it's a uh, tonic espresso Ooh, that sounds awesome so so you just they give you like in a glass they give you tonic water and then they pour in a shot of coffee it's actually and then put some ice in there and i'm not a tonic kind of guy but that tasted pretty good That's so look awesome. that up in your local that. hipster brew boss we have a new coffee machine at work. Never rub it, another man's the, brew barb. It's the coffee Never machine touch. where you have to make your own espresso with a little handle and you, you grind it up and you, you put it in and you espresso? tap it. And, yeah, like, you know. Like, like Italian. Espresso. But I press the double shot. I like double. Not you like single. the double. You want the heart to go And then TikTok. I make the milk, you know, with the... Oh, because you don't have your milk and you ruin a good coffee. You, your bum. 
you, you are the bum. I, I like drink the, the coffee. <laughs> I drink okay. the coffee. The brown coffee. Drink the coffee. And yeah, but I want to say that I like tonics. Like I liked, um, you know, Schweppes tonic water for years. And when you combine it with the gin, it's it's fun alcohol. I uh, listen. So, so, <laughs> so that's is what we that your choice? Is, well, is that your choice? So, like in a bar, and you go for a cocktail, you go for gin and tonic. I, I don't know what I go for. Just <laughs> you whatever. don't really go. Okay, I, I don't have a standard. I yeah, I'm usually things. Captain Morgan with Coke. That's like the oh, like Coca Cola. Yeah, because like Coke right. is like sugary and gets okay. you up and cap- all right, nice with cool. It. So my That's beer great. is just a local. It's fantastic. It's Wait, let a man Fifth. talk about his beer. Okay, okay, <laughs> it's okay. It's not interesting. Local beer called Fifth Element Beer. It says <gasps> not a movie a- theme beer. Fifth wait, but but oh, no, wait, 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 wait. The movie, what, 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 what? the movie. There's a movie called Blue Lagoon, by the way. <gasps> oh, so it's Blue Lagoon film, Fifth Element film. And yours exactly. is a movie-related one. Yeah, it's yours a fun, is vaguely but it's a, movie-related. <laughs> <laughs> Clockwork, Clockwork with Tangerine is the sequel. <laughs> yeah, it's Clock, the Clockwork sequel. Tangerine. Um, yeah, mine's an Imperial India Pale Ale. It tastes like a pretty, pretty decent, pretty decent pale ale. That's that's my story. We're full of uh, incidents, not incident, coincidences. <laughs> coincidences. Coincidences. Man. Yes, Phil. We will find um, out what that's your great. So, are today. Well, my coincidences today are fantastic. I'm very proud of myself for for making these these uh, these re- relations between films that uh, you wouldn't know anything about. But anyway, um, so since we have finished our our beer talk, we can play the intro again. <gasps> metal yeah. to the pedal. I mean, pedal. <laughs> pedal to the metal. Metal to the pedal, indeed. Um, so welcome, everybody. I mean, I, before I wanted, to, I wanted to mention one thing before we started, and I mm-hmm. would love to suggest this. And you know, like we always talk about certain things that are happening in in movies or entertainment, which mm-hmm. is always kind of it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to do. We don't do it a lot because we just plain forget or don't even look at that. So I don't even know what's going on. And even if I did throughout the two weeks, I would forget and I didn't write it down. Mm-hmm. So maybe, <laughs> maybe. We can try that next. No, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Well, what anyway, do you want to say? What did you want to say? You want to talk I about movie news? I just wanted to news? say that, it, yeah, just just talking about some other things that are going on, you know, like something that would be interesting or something that is interesting to talk about for a little bit that's not necessarily like, oh, this person's been cast in this film, but it's like uh-huh. just something. But it has, but it has to be movie related? I mean, entertainment related. It doesn't even have to be movie related, to be honest. I think I think everybody knows mm-hmm. what we're talking about. Anyway, never mind. Oh, just like, just neither current, here current nor Current events, current events. Yeah, maybe, maybe something yeah. like that. It's I guess like nice usually, chat. yeah, yeah. We usually pop those in the chat, so maybe we could save them for mm-hmm. for conversation. I guess would be nice. I I wouldn't mind doing that. I think that's a little gives more variety to this show. I have a good idea, mm. yeah. dear listener. What are your current events that you're reading about? Oh yeah, are you Ooh, current? Your current. What's your What's your drink in the club? Yeah, when, you're, <laughs> when, you're, when you're dancing, when you're dancing, this way away. Is it a blue Saturday lagoon? night? The blue lagoon. That's like to say it every time you say it. You can't. Do <laughs> it. Blue lagoon. He's like, I want a blue lagoon. Plava Laguna. Remember that from Fifth right. Element? I do. Uh, I remember, yeah. Ah, Diva More Plava Laguna. Wow. Exactly. Crazy, crazy. So, so anyway, guys. Connection. It's September, and because it's September, we, again, do not have an amazing list of movies that any of us can be interested in maybe As, watching. Well, I, uh, well, I mean, okay. Tim probably does, but I mean, I, <laughs> and look, because of the constraints of uh, country differences between releases, there's also a big disconnect. So movies that will come out in the States probably won't come out in Croatia, True. where me and Jake are mm-hmm. living, or Slovakia, where Tim's living, so there will never be a sync line but when we find one we have to take advantage of it because otherwise we won't have a movie to we talk to about next shot, time you know? true but there's so many movies shot. coming out still this year that i send you guys well, of course of course of course but i'm Hopefully just saying that right talent. now right now we're kind of Mouth in a water. lull we're kind of in a lull we're kind of in a in a little like who knows Boat. what we're gonna you know what we're gonna bring up and so i had no Mark. other choice i literally had like what are, what, what else did we have to watch uh to make this podcast happen this this these two weeks hmm. it's a great what question. are you saying what 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 did you I'm say i'm saying so? what are our what what selections do we have oh like current? what are the other choices right yeah apart from the one that phil picked yeah apart yeah. well i can check 
I mean, I don't think there is a lot. I know that we can make exceptions by finding something that's been in theaters for a couple of months, couple of weeks. <laughs> Which, yeah, well, we can Netflix it, but it wasn't even nothing on Netflix at the moment. Uh, right now, sorry. I was and um, away because of some scheduling, Flexnet? well, mm-hmm. because of Flexnet. some scheduling, we uh, just decided to, I honestly, I just picked something and I thought, okay, let's just watch this. You know? We have Anna. No choice. Anna from, uh, Green from, from Fifth Element Man, his movie. Mm-hmm. What's his face? Frenchman. But, Pedophile. Oh, yeah, what yeah, is yeah, his yeah. name? <laughs> no, he's not. He is not a pet. He is? I don't think so. Oh, well, look, okay. Like, no, he's not a pedo, but I think he's like, he dated like really young girls and stuff. Um, okay, maybe. We got a. Uh, why did he translate it? <sighs> yeah, we don't have a lot of movies, <laughs> to be honest. There you go. See what I mean? See what I mean? So, anyway. Well, no, no, no. Um, wait, 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 wait. Angry Birds 2. Uh, <laughs> I love the silence. R- Rambo. Oh yeah, Rambo uh, came. No, out. that's coming out later in our in our country oh, here. <laughs> Toy <laughs> Story Four for some reason. Oh, you yeah, guys that's, watched that's really Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, I thought that it was, was pretty good, good too. All right, no, nice no, movie. we don't have a lot of. Them. I was just joking around. Yeah. I was just joking around. So, what's the movie you picked, Philip? Oh yeah. yeah, by the way, Luke Besson. I just remembered that's his name. Luke Besson. I don't know. If, allegedly, I don't know. Luke there, there's Besson. Some, there's some, Huh, huh, huh. So because I had nothing left and because this was the only movie that was showing that was relatively new and Tim could watch it at the same time, it is called The Goldfinch. <gasps> dum, dum, dum. It is a, it was a film directed by, <laughs> by, blah, 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 blah. by John Crowley. So I don't know if that yes, means and, anything and, to you. And, yes, it does mean something to, you, to me. Uh, I watched a film by, of his called uh wow jacob. how do you say how would you write that down to jacob how would you write that down like a like a half an a yeah and then it's called brooklyn dots. so <laughs> i remember okay <laughs> you remember did you remember or did you look at it <laughs> i actually remember you, while you i was looking it up on wikipedia i remembered before i scrolled um yeah, it's called Brooklyn, and it's with uh, uh, a great actress. I keep forgetting how we pronounce her name. Sharsha, Shara, Ronan. Guys, Sersha. Sersha, you. thank you. <laughs> Hans Hollert. <laughs> listen. <laughs> Heathen listen, mystic peasant. It's hard. Look, Tim, you wouldn't have known unless she told you how to pronounce it. She I did on interviews. interviews. She's like, I did. I Sersha. Did. You know where I know from? But I forgot. From the, 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 that animated movie, the Irish one with, um, with the little seal. The oh girl's yeah, name this is directed by Toon uh, by um, Toon Cartoon Saloon. I think those are the guys who make those. They're very good. They're well, Irish. A movie I wish very we good could talk Irish about animation studio. Is a movie she was in called Lady Bird, which is one of my favorite films. Probably I love that movie. Oh really? I yeah. just realized that she was in a movie called Hannah, where she plays like this super spy that's activated. Yeah. But anyway, Sarah I want to say, Phil, sorry to, to steal your thunder, but Brooklyn is a film I watched. We watched me and Paula, and I have to say, it's 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 a very it's a very decent film. I liked it. Okay, Brooklyn. Um, John Crowley is Irish, and he directed this film. And this film is actually, I just found out that it's um, based on a novel. I just found based out too. on a novel Book by Donna adaptation. Tart. And um, I honestly, I think this was the first time in a long time where I actually went to see a film where I didn't know anything about it. Hmm. That's true. I just looked up the little went in cold. on Letterboxd and that's about it. Yeah. I just, I just saw the poster once again. That's all I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. It's a boy flying. Yes. I thought it was Darkness. going to be different. But the only, um, the one thing that I would be <laughs> yeah. interested in or that I think Tim was interested in is that it's... Uh, Cinematographed by uh, my boy, my boy, the, the legendary Deacons. Roger Deakins. Deakins, Robbie Deakins. Deakie, my boy. So, what did you think of this film? Who and what is it first? about? Oh, do I have to mention what okay, it's about? Okay. I think yeah, I should yeah, mention what it's about. You, you should, okay, so here, here's a little tip. For yeah, you you say you say what the what the movie's about, and when you ask a question like that to the room, pick one of our names because it's going to be <laughs> silence. Right, anyway. right. Okay, just pick All whoever, right. and we'll no the problem, other one no problem. Later. Okay, Good. because Great. usually we tell each other that we should probably write down a synopsis that we can say in one minute, so we can just get that out of the way. By the mm-hmm. way, spoilers. I keep forgetting to do this. Spoilers, oh, yeah, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Um, and I didn't do that because I forgot. Plain old forgot, but I'll try anyway. So. An explosion happens in the museum. A child lost his mother in that explosion, but he 
uh, takes a painting from that museum for himself and then gets introduced to a family of rich people who uh, one of them is played by Nicole Kidman and they take him in. But then his deadbeat dad shows up, takes him to Vegas. Uh, he still has that uh, painting. The painting is being wanted and looked for by or no, actually, it's a supposed um, uh, lost in the explosion, but he still has it. He meets a lot of different people um, and a lot of stories happen. And uh, when he's an adult, he works with uh, the guy from Casino Royale, who's an FBI agent. But in this movie, he's a you carpenter. Mean the guy from Westworld? Or the guy from Westworld that I didn't see. And I, apparently he's in it too. And um, uh, eventually he has to uh, clear his name because that uh, painting has been stolen from him. By whom? By his friend that he met as a child. And <laughs> That's right. Boris and, the Goth. <laughs> Boris the Goth. And, um, well, uh, eventually what happens is that he has to um, make amends right because... Uh, this was his one source of comfort uh, for because it reminds him of his mother who died in that same event, and that's uh, that's about it. He has to try to get that painting back because uh, it's being used for um, like a drug deal sort of um, collateral, and uh, the authorities are trying to find out about that painting too. So everything revolves around the painting, and it's the goldfinch. It's his bird, and it's from the like sixteen thirty nine. It's, it's like. Bird. It's, it's from a famous artist <laughs> that I should remember, but I don't. The famous artist. <laughs> from the 1600s. Famous Gautimo del Toro. No, it's and Carl Fabritius. And that's pretty much it. It's a drama. It's It's dramatic. It's about a boy's life, and he turns into an adult, and he has a lot of different um, drugs. a lot of different complications. He has a lot of drugs that goes on. So, there we go. So, Jake, <laughs> what did you think? Thank you. Wow. Mm. Thank you. I was hoping you'd ask me because I was thinking about what I was going to say. Things I liked about the movie, enjoyed, were the tone, the feel, and the performances. Things I didn't like the about performances, the movie, huh? Yes, the performances. Things I didn't like about the film were the length and the fact <laughs> that it was uh, basically four films in one movie. Maybe even five. In I think the, it was the, more than movies. four. I think I don't know. Yeah, and that that's my uh, my verdict. Mm. Tim, um, so you know, like you said. You, you went to see the movie without knowing what it is. And mm -hmm. we talked about this before, that it can be a blessing. But sometimes it can be opposite <laughs> of a blessing. Because <laughs> uh, uh -huh. the... So it starts off, we're, we're like, nice, you got some deacons in there, you got some cool music, yeah, and yeah. you're like, oh, what's happening? You don't know where mm -hmm, the story's mm -hmm. going, right? And, and and then your mind starts to, 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 to figure predict, out... Predict, or know, like, yeah. Yeah, you're, you start, you're starting to, to predict. To look forward to things that might happen. Yeah, you're, you're, you're trying to, yeah, maybe figure out the plot or what's going to happen. And, um, you know, like the first part, like, feels like... You said that it's based on a novel, and it actually felt like reading a novel, like, like Harry Potter or something like that. The books, what I, you know, we read when I was a kid. You lose your parents and you're thrust into this unknownness, you know. He goes right. to this family. And the entire first, like act of the movie i thought it was a very different kind of movie than what it was mm -hmm. because he's like there's like these connections there's like there's the old west world slash casino royale man and he saw he he was connected to this man who died and then the man gave him the painting and then they're always talking about like the painting and then there's this old lady this, this Nicole Kidman with the piercing blue eyes always looking at her. That's while, right. That's while, right. While, while at, the, while at the rich house place. And she's just like, oh, antiques. And like, oh, I know of the old man. I know of the place. And I kept thinking there's like a conspiracy going on, like something more sinister is going on. Like mm -hmm. all three of those guys were like conspiring and they blew up the museum because they wanted to steal the painting but this little kid got in the way because if something went wrong and now he has the painting and i was i thought it's going to be like this thriller that they're going to try to yeah. get the painting from the little kid because she's always looking at him and they're like oh go here go there and he's like there's all these Absolutely. adults and then no he goes <laughs> he, then all of a sudden it stops and i'm like where's this going he goes to to, to uh what, what is it nevada to take drugs with yes. the kid from stranger well, things I, I, and i'm I like say, yeah yeah I'm like, well, what's happening? With, with his, with his Russian accent. Go? I'm like, well, what, what? I mean, like, I understand them. Like, what are you going to do in the middle of the desert? Like, you either turn into, like, some crazy religious fanatism or, or, you, or you go to sub <laughs> substance abuse, <laughs> which they did, obviously. What else are you going to do? Yeah, but yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's gone. And then I was like, okay, let's just, I guess, watch the movie. And what I got, I, I kind of fell flat to me by the end, unfortunately. 
My imagination for, got the better of me. For me, the whole beginning, opening, it's not an opening act, but sort of the first sort of sequence of the movie, I really was convinced that the flashbacks to him as a kid were going to be just the introduction of like, what's the background yeah, me too, me of too. the movie? And then we cut That's back what to the like. Casino Royale Hotel in Amsterdam. And it's like, you know, because of the synopsis, I also had a little bit of a bias. It said, you know, he turns to a life of crime or something like that. Oh, you read and the I synopsis? Thought, no, no, not synopsis, a little blurb, you know, like a little tagline, okay. quasi. Yeah, yeah. You know, the little thing to sort of get you to watch the movie. And that's what I thought. I thought it would be him in the future as an adult, uh, you know, dealing with this world of crime and guilt and all this stuff. Jacob can't um, wait for the crime. He wants more crime. <laughs> it's just he wants all the criminal. He's ready the for the crime. <laughs> it's it's crime. Time. Time. The synopsis. I know, I know, I know. Stop okay. with the drugs, kids. Shoot someone. Listen, so I, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to go with you guys through, what, like I said, I really do believe this movie has four or five uh, potential films in there. At um, least. And I wanted to go through with them with you guys to see what they all are. Maybe for our listener, too, to, to see. You know what they're all right. Is. Well, first of all, let me explain what I felt because you didn't. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, well, you're you the host, you can allow yourself. Yeah, you know, so I, I was, I was, so when we went into the theater, there was maybe one couple that was like all the way up in the back. <laughs> Same thing here, I was the only one with a couple <laughs> in the back, <laughs> which I think we, I really had, wanted had, to make out or have sex Phil, or something. Did we but have I, a ruined couple? It for I think them. we had no, we had a solo guy and we had an older woman. Maybe oh, they were okay. a couple, they were just meeting and they you throw yeah, all their plants, you know, blind date. Yep. Um, and they like three well, rows across. Anyway, um, in these seats, we have wonderful, rich, beautiful seats that don't fold up. They're just nice and wide. You know, they're like almost like couches, like recliners. Rich and they don't recline. And then there's these love seats, right? And yeah. I'm like, hey, no one's here. I will Premium just lie comfort. down on this love seat and <laughs> claim the love seat. <laughs> yeah, just I just Did lie down, it? having it. I, I loved it. it. It was it was a very comfortable time. But then, as the movie progressed, um, I of course was. I was um, enthusiastic about seeing where this is going to go. I was ready. I saw the beginning of the film. It's an explosion. It's, but you don't know it's an explosion, so it keeps it mysterious. And I'm like, okay, okay, let's see where this yarn will go. How yeah. will it string me to a point, to a, uh, to a conclusion, and to so I can follow what's going on in this journey. It just strung me along to five different places, and then I just lost interest, like very. <laughs> very early on and oh, i was that's interesting i, I was did, trying did you to you guys lose interest or no well mm -hmm. you, you lost interest i mean i mean phil but tim i mean I, it's I, not I, like i was like oh this is boring let's stop but at certain yeah, I points i was just thinking please um i need to pee just tell me what's going on i, I need i need a hook where's my hook i want to get back into the story i want to get back into the momentum there is no momentum because there's five different stories uh, I, I think I, I didn't like completely lose it. I, I, I followed through. I didn't fall asleep or start, you know, playing on the phone. Uh, but I mean, I didn't do that either. I keep my phone on. I, hey, I, think I keep I my phone, the... phone on airplane mode, guys. Ooh. That's what I do. You're a good boy. Uh, I, I, I watched the movie. Unless and, and, it's an emergency I, call and can't get through. No, I think airplane mode you can get through on emergency. Oh, really? But wait, no. I guess the 911 would have to call you. I'm thinking because it turns off the cellular. And yeah, why would you go? No? Why don't you just go do not disturb? Because not then disturb. you have exactly that's what on, I know. People on your know. favorites I, can call you then. Exactly. Which is my wife. No one else. No, 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 one favorite. No one else. Really? What? I have no. Favorites. Yeah, because if you're on do not disturb, your favorites can still reach you. What if I want to reach Tim? What then? Huh? Yeah. Tough luck, man. <sighs> You'll die on some curb if I'm bleeding well, out. I know who. <laughs> Is not going to be on the podcast next episode. Oh, <laughs> by the way, I have it I'm scheduled after eleven and until seven. No me one too. can reach uh, mine's me. Mine's eleven to eight. Nice, yeah. nice. It's just like peace, right. peace and nice. quiet. That's um, very good. Has, That's Phil actually has, cool. Phil has scheduled airplane mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. My, so what I was saying, my idea yeah, might go, be go a little on, not go so on. good. Uh, is that yes? Yeah, similar that I follow through the whole movie, but definitely kind of started to lose interest and in, in character and stories and when it finished it was like uh, i guess you know what i mean it, it didn't yes that's how i felt yeah too. that's it you know that's where it lit up that this is it kind of i thing. think i followed the movie very very closely and i wouldn't say it was not you know intriguing overall but the thing was really that you know after a certain threshold there were so many potential uh, storylines or <laughs> yeah yeah or, or potential films in there that uh 
you know, and there was no sort of real thread, you know, throughout the whole movie. Um, I guess end, it's, it, what is it, it? It's like life is bad to boy, boy turns bad. Kind but of. But it's not even that bad. It. That's no. the other thing, right? It's, he's not even that terrible. Okay, it's yeah. not like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's bad. His mother dies, obviously, when he's young, while his father left him, who's a deadbeat. It's, it's pretty bad. It's not, you know. Of course. And he doesn't do that well, can much we go bad through things. the things? It's just like the a three mm-hmm. different thing. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, go, so Jake. Lead us, Jake. Lead us, Jake. Yes, so your journey. we, uh, the beginning journey is that um, we get this glimpse of the future, right, of the adult, and something has gone wrong. And then... Sort of, sort of the real first one is the the flashback, right, of of the kid storyline. And the kid storyline is post bomb, right, being adopted, kind of entering in that different world yep. with different now foster parents, meeting new people, coping with all this stuff, adjusting. Uh, then we have the Arizona Chronicles, right, or no Nevada Chronicles, right, where it gets taken. Right, away. but it also with bridges into. The problem is that it also bridges into, um, no, no, before the, before Boris the Goth and the Arizona Chronicles, Mm -hmm. there is also, uh, talking to the antiques man, the former FBI agent from Casino Royale or the man from, uh, Westworld. (laughs) Well, he's not actually a man. Twist, twist, spoilers, spoilers, uh, spoilers, spoilers. Sorry, I should have said that before that, but don't listen, <laughs> twist, don't listen twist, to me. Twist. Um, he, he tries to, you know, like the kid, his name is Theo. By the way, he looks like Theo, our, oh, our real yes. life yeah, He has glasses in the, the glasses hair. Too. I was like, look, it's hair. Theo. Yeah, yeah it's perfect. Um, he gets a little interested in antiques dealing, I guess. And so we have like sort of so teaching far... him some of that. And he introduces her him to the redheaded girl who was also... Um, Injured the in the bomb. In the bomb. Yes. Who was the, the flute no more. Who was the daughter of the professor who was talking to her there, who was the business partner of the former FBI guy from Casino Royale. So, yeah, so far we have this connected. sort of child story of tra- experience a traumatic event, event. We have him meeting this uh, antiques dealer, uh, craftsman, and sort of being introduced to that world. And yep. we have now this sort of romantic sort of story or connection between him and this girl from the museum yeah. right that's three so who far. has yeah who has gotten a lobotomy and she cannot <laughs> right <laughs> remember like arnold schwarzenegger lobotomy. yeah i don't know why i did that <laughs> she's got a lobotomy it's just not not right in the head i can't then we have the very good nevada or arizona chronicles she's got a lobotomy further uh you know exp- uh, seeing what this kid is going through uh which is you know has some elements of like you know Abuse, right, of, what's his name? Goth in Nevada guy, now, the Nevada, Nevada Chronicles. And his dad, who's not a nice man. And we think he's nice at some points because he wants to give him a $10,000 savings account, but he's actually using it for his paying back deals. some guy that we meet in one scene. And we also have, like Tim mentioned, this backstory of the painting, yeah. which is another storyline in a sense because it's about this him stealing the painting and having it been given to him and he doesn't know what to do and he keeps it in the guilt and so on. And how it it reminds him of his mom, so he's very partial to it. Right, right. And he has this whole tale of, right, like because he stole it, he can't see his mom in his dreams, right? It sounds like that, yeah. I felt like it was his Um, fault. Yeah, it was was very partial, kind of like... I guess that part kind of vanished away with like the with the ending with with Boris. Oh yeah, the goth you don't remember that. back, and they're well, like I going to, to Amsterdam keep, and stuff. Keep going, and then we then we go into the future, right? Where we see. Oh man, we go to the future many times. It crisscrosses a lot. Crisscrosses, yeah. Well, he turns uh, Theo turns into Baby Driver. Yes, That's he turns right. into Ansel That's Elgort, right. and he's cool. an adult, and and now he's in New York again. He always looks like he looks so normal, but I always picture him in the back of it as he's like fantasizing about murder for some reason <laughs> you mean the <laughs> face or what yeah yeah it's you mean so you mean the actor or the character in this movie i don't know it just, he seemed the same way in baby driver so it might be ah, an actor okay thing. i don't know yeah he's mm. probably got that he's got that look he's got that look and he's uh, now he's that working look. at that antique shop but you know i guess he's somewhat doing some not so clean business 
not she's true. basically yeah. selling the refurbished stuff that's not true antiques as true antiques for the right. antique money and that's not the way of westworld slash casino royal man Yes. And, um, mm. and also the buyer is like the, you know, if you look, if, if you write a uh, corrupt rich man, this man's face will be on it because that's how he looks like the corrupt, rich antique buyer. He's like, I know what you're doing. You sold me a fake. <laughs> and we also At that point, the- I thought mm-hmm. there was a plot hole because, or, or I thought, I actually thought I missed a scene or something like that because I was so confused about the Shady. Yeah, who that guy was? Who the, no, how did he know about about the painting? Because it's been with him the entire time. Oh no, no, the, the painting's way later. He mentions the painting way later. No, he doesn't. He's only two was scenes. The first meeting. He, the first meeting. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, the first meeting. He's like, meeting. He's like a fake. Oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. okay. Like, I don't but I that know. One. I know about the painting. I don't know. This movie felt like uh, it took a year and a half to watch. So, <laughs> <laughs> like he he knew about some Miami wrong, deals yeah. where the painting has come out, and he knew he was in the pa- there, and he's dealing with antiques, so he's presuming he's got something to do with it right and then yeah. i was like but wait what what is the i was like so confused until you reveal later that boris the goth stole the painting off him well like i was year, wondering years when back when he was saying like i don't know anything what you're talking about you know our main character yeah i, I was thinking for a second like okay so he could either be protecting himself and he knows what's happening with the mm-hmm. painting or b he really doesn't and you know he he knows it's locked away in his safe um and that's it, you know, like he just, he's just ignoring yeah, it yeah. and ignoring yeah. the, the fact I that he stole confused. it. I was confused. And so we're, we're sort of I was confused. Re- revisiting him, uh, not, not revisiting, but yeah, seeing where he is in his adult. I her computer. He's selling her these was broke. slightly fraudulent, she didn't like iTunes. <laughs> slightly fraudulent so furniture. And I also we were introduced to the woman. Or the girl back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The and she's an adult she's now. She's dating <laughs> someone else. She's in London. It's, it's bittersweet. She, no, you're not sad. someone else. She's dating the guy who got him in trouble because of the cigarettes. So oh, he, no she's dating way. the guy that basically got his mom killed. Wow. I didn't make that connection. Yeah. It's a dude. Wow. Everything's connected. Wow. It's all connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all connected. And then he also bumps into uh, the the mean member of the rich family that he was adopted Which shows into. up one scene yells at his father yeah that was so yeah. that was so stupid remember he comes in he's like oh who do i have to blow <laughs> to get, to a, get a good breakfast around here and then they're like who back to your that? room <laughs> and he's like oh. no yeah it's great and he and, then, he, and they he sees him on the on street the and he's like hey hey it's you and he's like oh man he's like how's andy my best friend from your place. Oh, we forgot about the best friend. There's so many characters in this you movie. See? It's hard to keep track of it. And, and then they friends. share a moment and he's like, he died on a boating accident or something. Yeah, you see more bad things happen to him. See? And, but there's a connection. He's, he's more drugs. reconnecting. Oh, yeah, that's right. He needs right. drugs too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's from, from a little uh, Altoid box. Yep. I think he... I don't know what I think it's like And so he's reconnected right with his old family, his uh foster mom. Nicole like, Kidman's old is, now. He's now yes. less strict. She loves him. She always loved him as a son. And as uh, a son. And what? He's going he gets some he gets engaged, right, to this woman Yeah, yeah, she, she starts flirty blurty with him cuz she's baby driver and she saw baby driver and she's like he's gay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so it's, yeah, his foster So mom then there's like a timestamp right? which I was also confused by. I was like what? Okay, yeah, I guess they're getting they're engaged now. Yeah, but in truth, she still. Wait, did loves you mean? Did you mean time skip? Man. Yeah, time skip. What did I say? <laughs> Cigarette man. It's time stamp. And I thought <laughs> <Sorry, right? laughs> time stamp. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, there's a time skip, and then then we have the Phoenix Chronicle. No, not Phoenix. I'm sorry. Uh, Arizona. No, where, where are we? Arizona Nevada. Nevada. We did the Nevada we did Chronicles, the Nevada where Chronicles, they're Chronicles, taking yeah. drugs and but they're just yeah, they're pool messing and around. Oh yeah, because like, the pool. Back, yeah. Boris gets beaten and by his dad. Smoking. Everyone's smoking in this movie. Mm-hmm. And then you got like. His dad beats him because he tried to take his money. You mean Boris? Um, no, but then didn't like doesn't like uh, Theo's oh, dad like slap him because he's like yeah he slap him because Theo's he wants to get his shady money. Deal man. He's yeah, a shady he needs deal man. he needs Theo's money from his trust fund and or then whatever. His father dies too. Yeah, yes, and yes. I was at that point. I was just like, okay, this isn't really. I'm, I'm not. I'm not feeling it anymore because it's like everyone's dying, and it's a little bit okay. But l- you know. let me ask. And everyone's because... dying off screen. I need death to yeah. see death. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's too many. Like Theo, come sit down. And I, I think at this point, Theo was like, "Who died now? Who is it?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. But come Who's on, dead? when you guys were watching boy? The, the scenes really? with the characters talking stuff, I think it was pretty good. I mean, I don't know. I, I like the 
the atmosphere, the the tone. I think, I think the little I mean, kid I liked, was good. I think he, yeah, the he kid sold was great, it. I think the kid was good. Yeah, Baby He's Driver, great. not so much. Right. I think I think the kid actor was was better. I think he, yeah. his name's Oaks Freely. He did a really good That's job. A cool name. Opinion. Oaks. Oaks. Hey, Oaks. Smoky um, Oaks. I, I think Oki. I joined Phil in the bad. It's a little, it's a little hazy okay. after that because uh, then we have him trying to tell the woman, the girl back then, like I said, in the museum, he's trying to tell her now as an adult that he loves her. You mean the redhead her. girl? Oh, the redhead true. girl that he met so who was lobotomized. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, she has a true love a boyfriend in, yeah. in London. And she, she cannot reciprocate the love, which I'm not sure why. I didn't understand that. Lobotomy. <laughs> you cut him! No, she said, like, <laughs> you cut up his brain, stuff. you She's bloody like, babo! Oh, no, yeah, yeah. She can't... She can't be in U.S. because of murder. I know mean, the bombing, and she's like, "Oh, I can't love you." Why yeah, so can't he can't, he he can't move to London? London. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure that one out at all. Honestly, like, because that was to me, it felt like what? What was that? Uh, and then so he's sad, right? And then in his sadness, he goes out for a cigarette, which is what you do. And then he uh, then he sees, he goes into, you know, he gets, he wants to get drugs. Oh, right? yeah, that's right. That's that, was, that was it. That was it. Not cigarettes. Cigarette, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> he needs the drugs, the hard, the hard shit. And then he calls a guy and he's like, where do I get this stuff? He's and like, then they're all rushing there. No, club, no, we this. don't. Uh... Yeah. And he's like, I'm looking for Sarah. And they're like, Sarah who? Sarah no drugs who? for you. And he's like... Oh, uh, never mind. I'll leave. And then suddenly, <gasps> Boris. So suddenly, uh, uh, what's his face? Um, Simon Pegg's character from uh, The World's End just shows up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and see, that's another connection. Yeah, I see he yeah. visited uh, this girl, and yeah. then Boris. And Boris, Boris is they like, do drugs. Like, Potter, Potter. Like, it's you. I can't believe. Oh, Potter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I can't believe it's you. Harry Potter. He's like, he's like, what do you do? He's like, I do this and that, <laughs> mostly criminal thing. But I think old po- Potter, old uh, Boris. I mean, he's a kid, I guess. But I think the the other kid's actor uh, accent was way too movie Russian. Boris, uh, you know, like there's a lot of. I, I, you know what? I actually I like didn't. The kid's I didn't because I don't know. It was a little bit too what, over the top. It was like video but games. What, but here's go the check up, the go no, check go the, check like the uh, uh, area yeah. there. And you always, yes, exactly. you always put Could weird check. eyes okay, in okay. your ex. Maybe. <laughs> but listen, guys, listen, guys. He was younger, so I think it makes sense that maybe he might still have a Oh, like, accent. He, like his accent th- toned down? Yeah, yeah, but I think that they should have put that. Like, they should have put, like, older Boris, you know, he's traveling as a cosmopolitan man. Why it's would he still have a cosmopolitan man. He should at least be a little more... <laughs> But then, listen, then the viewers would be confused. Who is this fucking <laughs> but guy? Everything's confused. <laughs> this see, movie is already like I you, you like can tell that. like what's going on. We're talking about the plot here, and there's so many plot threads that really Well let's finish okay. this. Let's finish this. So he he meets Boris and Boris is like he's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, I feel so bad. He's like Potter. I he's like, I did something. He's like, What what? What? He's like, I st- Stole the dun, painting. Dun, dun. And I kissed you then. That's true. I was wondering, was he supposed to be yeah, like gay? I don't know. But that's why I thought no. earlier. I thought earlier. You I know, thought, you know, he Russian. Like, Russians like, Russians kiss confess. each other on mouth all the time. Okay. Yeah, Russian love. I know, but I, I was you, thinking brother. maybe that was me a plot point. Like, you know, that's the thing. I think they would have been all the more if it was actually like a thing. Yeah, no, I figured that out once we see Boris again that it wasn't the case. But I thought it was earlier. He's gay with drugs. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, uh, I, I stole the painting. He's like, what? You stole a painting? What in the world? He's like, that's why all the Miami <laughs> shit happened. Oh, that, that, that's it was on the link. news, I yes. must thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, man. And then and then somehow he goes to his, uh, our main character, Theo, goes to his safe, right? Yeah. It takes and so he, long. He, he, he never unwrapped. That's the, that's the plot point. He never unwrapped the painting ever since he was a kid, right? He packed it up in newspapers. Yeah, but for like ten years plus. You think he he'd know how the it. newspapers were wrapped? I guess he just forgot. So to to see the switch and, and it's yeah. like a textbook. Yeah, and the switch But maybe Boris, he's a coming <laughs> young man. He knows yes, how to wrap. He knows how to uh, <laughs> sell <cello> tape. <laughs> Lay down some <laughs> sick <beats. laughs> And so he's like, "Oh no, this is shocking!" You know, like it's stolen. It, it it's lost, not stolen. It's lost. 
because, you know, it's out of Boris's hands. And so that's the other plot point we have, which is now a, a race This is the to, most lo-fi gangster yeah. <laughs> heist ever. It's like a bunch of guys. It's like here's random, thing, random models that are supposed to be yeah. gangsters. <laughs> and I was wondering what you guys think about that, because for me, up until this point of the movie, you know, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of a lot of storylines and a lot of potential movies in there. But still, the, the tone was fairly similar. Like, there wasn't anything super kind of unrealistic or I, I think the only thing that, that did take me out was the little chorus. <laughs> I think that one was like, I like the, like with, you know, the, the music with, with Deacon's beautiful cinematography and everything was like, was putting you in the right mood, like the serious movie you're watching. Right. And then that accent yeah, kind of like yeah. sucked okay. me out. And then the song was for you guys. Off and then, and then towards, oh dude, I, this is my, I think my main complaint, like it's not a bad movie, but I think my main complaint, the, the songs and the music was so like, like the songs? Uh, guys, what songs? No, there's a, there's a, there was a few songs instead of instead of the scores. My one complaint is that the music was so sentimental at some points, like too much cheese, like it didn't match the mood. Mm-hmm. Except like the end credits, that 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 the, I don't know if you stayed for the credits, but that piece. I mean, I stayed to amazing. most of the credits. I love that music; it's nice. The end it was like 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 the compound chords, and it was like very confusing emotionally. I liked like, it. I liked. You it. don't know how do you feel, but a lot of times it's like. Mm, it's like John Williams or something like like Spielberg movie like oh we are got some nice close ups of that movie. Goldfinch painting. No, there was a lot of close ups. I, I don't think I, I don't think I Deacon's used music. nothing smaller than like a fifty millimeter on, millimeter on this. So maybe one shot when he's walking out of the the bomb and it's like a close up on him and everything's like a shaky cam. Maybe everything yeah. else is super zoomed in. Like didn't hmm. think of that. Okay, um, so what happens? Lo fi yeah, heist yeah. happens. They. Eventually well, 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 get Boris the paint. Is like, since he's in the criminal underground, he can sort of, you know, connect some dots and somehow find the painting. And then they go and try to retrieve the painting, you know, as sort of the criminal dealers. And they do. And it's like, oh, this is great, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> like, it's a big price, but worth it. He's like, yeah, worth it's so it. awesome. We, we saved the painting. But then they get Google. ambushed, right, by other yeah. people. And it's like, oh. And I thought Boris was going to die. But he didn't. You know what? It's, you know what's funny about that? It's so funny about it because like he got shot, and I'm like, all right, he's dead too. I guess that's <laughs> right. another character that's we can true. put You're into the list. Everyone dies. Yeah, but but he survives, and, and the painting gets taken. And I away. was not. I did not care if he survived. I was like, okay, he's alive. I figured that's he fine. would too. And the painting gets uh, gets stolen by another person and runs off. And our main character is like, I can't believe. Oh, our main character um, kills somebody too. Mm. He kills he kills one of the models and then he kills wants to kill himself. You mean one of the NPCs? Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was going to be like his the the the, the older brother from that family. So yeah, of connected. course, everything's connected. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's me, Theo. It was always we, me. And we <laughs> cut back to the hotel, and Theo is you know like just wrestling with the guilt, and it's oh man, so bad. Yeah, that's from a different film, of course. Of course, yeah. This is like film many seven. of these stories are. And then we finally get back to like a. Diner in Amsterdam or something, breakfast diner, right? And Boris saves the day. And Boris is like, look at the Look, newspaper. our incompetence <laughs> saved the day. <laughs> He's like, look, the man who ran away got by cops. Cops got him. And he's like, which, me, which means many paintings, not just bird, back. So many people die, but bird and And then his paintings. moral was like... <laughs> bird, I want yes. my bird. <laughs> his, his, his moral was like, see, bad things happen to us, and maybe we do bad things, but good come out of bad. It's life. Uh, it's life. Uh, and he's like, look, just and wrap then, that and then, package. And then our, our main <laughs> character, it, Theo... Send it, post-code it. My, our yeah. main character, Theo, is just cries, and he's happy, tears of joy, that <laughs> he saved his bird painting. Which, by the way, his mentor... The guy from oh, he was uh, mad. Casino Royale. Oh, he never raised his voice. Like that Casino Royale slash Westworld. Uh, uh, that guy yourself. is like, like his list of like, you know, like if you saw, saw like a chart, like the top of that chart would be paintings. Like everything is. is okay, like, by the you know, way, the actor's people, name is Jeffrey stuff. Wright. Just wanted to yeah. mention that. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's so cool. Like, oh, your family died. It's okay. You know, you do stuff. You sell yeah. bad furniture. Yeah. It's okay. He looks but rough the and painting, mean. The painting. Yeah. The painting. I must smoke my cigarette. And, so and this is what I wanted to say that, uh, and drink my drink. Uh, Blue Lagoon. No, no. His drink was whiskey. Whiskey Lagoon. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I wanted to say that, see, this was another film too. It's like the whole painting. Like, 
you know, if you had a movie about like painting and art and the value of art and all that stuff, like that's a whole movie you can explore. And the heist and, and all that. And, and Boris and, could be part of it. Sure. That's a, a different bit. film. Yeah. But this at the end of the movie was like, okay, like, man, like now we're talking about paintings and the paintings <laughs> are the most important thing ever. And like this guy that you cared about for 10 years, like you're never going to forgive him for this painting. Weird. Right? I mean, I haven't weird. read the, especially the book, especially since it's but... revealed that the professor who was business partners with Hobie, as the character is actually called in the movie, everybody who mentions his name. Who lives in a box and smells? <laughs> Sorry. Who he lives in a, a box and smells? There's a pack. Smells like a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> no, okay. So um, the professor actually gave the painting while he was dying after the explosion and everything mm-hmm. was foggy to the child, and he's like, "Child, take." this painting give Which, here's the why? ring why? Why? my ring <laughs> frodo give give, frodo give give the <laughs> ring to the guy from casino royale bobo he was my business partner and friend he'll know what to do with it but you never did so theo comes back right and all is well wasn't it something like that at the end yes all, all is well, well. Uh, everything's happy the, the, the casino nicole Royale's kidman and, and him are looking at a gallery somewhere and that's we right have a, but and, and we have the wonderful dramatic montage of you know like the beginning of the film before the explosion you can see his he sees his mom's face because right. in the that's entire true. movie you, you can see she her comes face out of the blur. so but, once but he you know yeah Brought back the painting, he can see his mother's face. Yeah, so basically... There you go. He's free now. He doesn't have to do drugs free. anymore. Yeah, except he probably does. Probably. Um, well, well here's the that, thing. Yeah, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I just sorry. want to say really that like... And that's know, the movie. In a way, like, when I'm talking at least, it might sound like I'm really like hating on this stuff, but I really don't think it's a bad film. I really don't. But I do think that there was so many different ideas here. Yeah, that yeah. At the end of the movie, I really did feel like, man, like, you know, I always wondered what is it like to watch a rough cut of a movie? You know, like what people talk about in making of... Like, assembly cut. Like, yeah, assembly cut, thank you, Phil. Like Lord of the Rings, you know, Lord of the Rings was like six hours, you know, Return of the King or seven. And you wonder, what would that be like? I think this movie gives you a little bit of a glimpse of what a movie like that might be. Um, <laughs> it's because true. It's really like, this is, a, this is a sort of assembly cut in a sense. And you go, man, you know, how are we going to cut this down into, if you have footage granted, uh, into a, a more focused, you know a one or two storyline movie where you can really, you know, follow something and it has some, some kind of, um, something, something yeah. more substantial in it. Cohesive storyline. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that, I that's think what, the, that's what I think, yeah. the thing is that, you know, it's based on a novel and usually when you go from a novel, try and, you know, you have a lot more space and a lot of time in a novel and you can do time. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. You can have someone age, you see it from the point of view, you can, you can have you know, many more the, subplots the story without a nasty noise uh, voiceover. So I think this is just a victim of, you know, taking a huge novel and then could be, could be. compromising it into a short movie where you have to, well, and maybe they didn't cut enough. Maybe they just kind of compressed it too much. Yeah, maybe they yeah. Should take out uh, not to things. not to go back to not to go back to Lord of the Rings, but I remember when they were adapting Lord of the Rings. I think one of the smartest choices that they made when they said, "How are we going to adapt this big uh, thousand plus page novel mm. into a movie?" Was we have to make it about one thing, and the movie really is only about taking the ring and throwing it into the fire <laughs> and, and it's about, yeah. and, and it's Frodo's relationship with that burden and everything else the that happens, <laughs> the bird, Hey, and everything else that happens around it is connected and serves the purpose of that objective. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I feel like this movie didn't have any kind of objective. It was trying to uh, steer towards. And that's why we have so many branching parts that feel like they just go into dead ends. And then yeah, or, or it made me objectives. kind of, yeah, too many objectives too, and um, I think yeah, that's. I mean, like that's we what talked about like. the plot for like half an hour now. But what, yeah. what's is there any like metaphor? Is there something that the movie wants to tell you? Like, what's the bigger meaning here? I kind of, yeah. I've lost it. Besides the whole thing, okay. But you know, I have to say, well, if to bad happen, happen, good thing good happen. Thing happen. Life, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> no, but once said, the, the, the movie doesn't necessarily have to have like a message per se. It, it or does. No, a movie like this usually kind of points to a direction like that's mm-hmm. trying to tell something because it's made up right it's not like an actual true story you're not right. like getting like oh poor boy look what happened to him i can't believe this happened to him it's like it's made up it's mm-hmm. it's going somewhere i would assume and just like maybe the whole point of maybe the novel is the, what you were talking about the painting thing like that's a suffering that he keeps with him like that's the yeah. grief and then when I he finally is, lets yeah. go he is free but like a movie just cuts off right after the movie just it's like 
Well, happy ending. Well, he that's what I said earlier. Bird you safe. Know. And you're like, what? <laughs> bird safe. It, it doesn't necessarily have to have a message, but I think you do, do need to focus on one narrative. Like if the whole movie was the the child, the the kid story, that would Kill be the a child. pretty that would be a pretty good um, you know movie in a sense where it would be about the atmosphere and the tone and and all that jazz. But this has <laughs> all that such jazz. Things. Such this has, you know, seven jazzes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a multi jazz. Yeah. So that's yeah. I think so we're all in the yeah, same kind of. So we're surprisingly <laughs> or unsurprisingly, we are in same boat. <laughs> we're in same yeah. boat. Okay, let's talk about some Any technical things because I mm. want my oh, closing thoughts thing. was, Tim, tell me what you thought of. Uh, Roger Deakins' cinematography. 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 Um, here's the thing. So uh, I, I love Deakins. I love two yeah. aspects of him. One is framing. Deaky book. When, it's, uh, when it kind of gives you an emotion, sometimes give you an opposite emotion. There's a few shots where like he would do a super wide shot just to give you like that feeling of, of loneliness. Or, you know, he can really... Framing can work. Which in this movie, the framing is very Hollywoody and very drama movie like i don't think there weren't any shots that kind of made me go wow but on the other hand what i love about deacons is his use of natural light he is mm-hmm. an absolute god it's just like <laughs> just just the color and just how he uses it like hold of of um uh skyfall is just mm, sky beautiful fall, it's uh, but there, there's a few shots like when he's in the amsterdam hotel and there's like the blue winter outside and he has like light lamp on him the colors are so perfect and the contrast is so perfect it was there's, wonderful there's, there's a few there's a few magical shots interior i like the i liked i liked a lot so of good. i loved the um i love the low light moments like i one of the big things that spring to mind when i think of this movie was when mm-hmm. oh by the way i loved that theo's glasses kept being reflected a lot it's yes. beautiful ah, i love that <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That was very good. And what else I liked was the low light moments. Like the one that I'm talking about specifically is when he gets to, I keep, why am I saying the different states? I was going to say Virginia this time, Nevada. When he gets to yeah. Nevada um, and then it's blue hour and she tells him to take out the trash and he goes out to take oh, out the that trash. That was awesome. That was great. Oh, it looks so nice. It was so nice and blue and it was very like crisp. That's what I'm saying. And it, usually he doesn't even use like color grading. He can just get that out of like a digital camera. He's just, mm. I remember watching this documentary. I don't know which movie was it, but Roger Deacon was the DP on it. And they're like, so what's like the day like? And like the director's like, well, we kind of plan it out. But then uh, sometimes just Roger says, you know what? Mm, we should film this year because the light will be good. And it's Roger. So we all listen. So we just back <laughs> up and go to the other place and like wait for the light. That's really cool. That's good. Yeah. So it's just he knows like, what he's doing. All the, the the entire thing looks really nice and crisp. And yeah. But I, he, uh, he's like a master of contrast shot that don't are not too obvious contrast. Like sometimes you have like too stylized and you can clearly see. There mm-hmm. was like a, they, they changed lighting. So, you know, it's like, it's almost like Sin City when the people have coming out of the shadows and it's super yeah yeah expressionist, mm-hmm. but like his stuff is just, he knows how to use it for storytelling and it's of some mundane bullshit light. And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. this looks, this looks so cinematic. It's beautiful. It's good. Yeah. It's a good I, I did, I did like a lot of the, the shots in this movie. Uh, so, I did, I did, I did in fact like the, um. Uh, interestingly, like when they were filming the gallery, not when mm-hmm. they were filming, just when the, when we see the gallery, the museum in the movie, um, mm-hmm. I was wondering to myself, this looks a lot like Skyfall when they were filming in the <laughs> uh, art gallery. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, maybe it's just a thing with creative people and the way they see how to film a certain area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so maybe Roger Deakins in this case was like, well, I did Skyfall like this and he probably was just intuitively doing it the same way because that's how he feels uh, um, art museum has to be f- filmed. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just like a subconscious thing. He's like, yes, he sees a museum. Saying, oh, I'm going to like it like this. You know, he did like a hundred movies. So I'm not even thinking of like, but then the other again, he does know a lot of stuff. We talked about this. Roger Deakins has an amazing website where he has a forum where people can ask him questions about anything about his lighting, camera use, or his I know, idea yeah. behind shots. And you can ask him and he'll answer it. It's amazing. The old man like he, will answer it. How old is he? he? He's like 70? Uh, 70, yeah. And he answers every and question. Every question is awesome. there. He's like, well, I use this camera and I use this. Or he's like, you know, sometimes give his opinion on like, oh, well, I was going... A lot of times it's like somebody uh, like 
links to like some kind of youtuber who you know like an armchair dp who was like explaining oh yeah yeah he uses three point you know uh thing uh whatever yeah, 2.8 like, f stop no but it's, it's more like oh he uses triangular positions you know for the framing for every uh, yes. shot in this movie the, the golden and ratio the go- golden ratio of three points and 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 then and then like, ratio, well yeah. that that's very nice analysis but i just kind of framed it because it looked nice like that <laughs> yeah that's how you do it baby uh, roger so deakins is great yeah. I like that guy. Did you guys know that Nicole Kidman is married to Keith Urban? Who oh, knew? really? Who knew? Who Who's knew? Uh, the country singer. What? Come out from America. <laughs> I don't think uh, I know anyone a country singer except the China only Twain. reason I know about Keith oh, Urban is it? because he sold an album that was released <laughs> that was all over Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> one, one time, I remember it was the Keith one Urban, time. The Keith so Urban we better collection. talk about this on our podcast. Yes, Philip, this one is time. the time. This is the time. It's true. Things that happened one time, we talk about. So, listen, I wanted to ask you guys. One um, fold the podcast. One. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys. Oh, okay, I wanted to ask you're the you host. guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. What, what? What? The budget for this film was 45 oh. million. It's good. What was the box office? Oh my Two. goodness! Two million. Gracious. That's so sad. Three point eight. 3.8. 3.8? I was joking. Oh, that's sad. It was us. <laughs> sad. We made all that money. <laughs> <laughs> Our <know>. tickets. <laughs> By the way, this, even this Nicole movie Kidman was oh, expensive. Oh, and, and I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention at the end of the film, the montage happens. Sad. You know, the, the the ending montage with the music, and you know, mm, showing the yeah. flashbacks, and you know, concluding everything. And there's, I think, there's a narration on top of that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I was just like. I was just, I was hoping that was the end because I was, my butt was hurting. That's usually happens when I'm not interested in, 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 in movies. I remember watching, I remember watching Rotten Tomatoes. You got the reviews and you got butt hurts. Green Tomato, Phil Dragish. My butt, my butt hurt. was hurting. I hope no, it but it's, it's true. Like I, I watched, uh, well, uh, I watched again? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's three hours long, right? Butt wasn't hurting. Nice. Uh, I watched this. Uh, I was already mm-hmm. like feeling yeah. feeling uncomfortable. Yeah, I hear you. Yes, I no. can hear you. Oh, good. Um, good. Uh, so anyway, I, I and I turned around to Jake. I turned around to Jake, and I was just looking at him at a glance because the movie was still going, so the light was off and it was dim. And I saw him like rubbing his eyes or something, and then he turned back at me, and I said, what? and I and I thought honestly, I thought, is he crying? Is Jake? Crying? I thought you were crying. <laughs> and then and then and then I thought, oh man. And I'm looking back I at the movie and, and going and going and going, what did I miss? How am I so dense that I didn't care for, for well, this film very when, much? When I thought you were crying. I, was I thinking, thought I was missing something. Oh, I was thinking, like, man, I was hilarious. thinking this movie is affecting you very much, Phil. I was thinking, <laughs> what 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 is affecting you here? Is there something? And then you, you both started with crying. <laughs> so so you don't feel bad. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then yeah, and then the lights came up, and I'm like, "Oh, never mind then." No, I was. It wasn't. Any of us are crying. Yeah. Um, I was. I, I think I was, was more. I was more uninterested than Jacob was. I think so. Movie, so. I think you were. Yeah. What I think Jacob was that, a little more tolerant. I, I, I watched it to the end. Like, hey, totally. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dissing on the movie. No, you know, it was no a good I, effort. Look, you know, and it's shame that it only made so much little because it's worth a it lot more. Shame. I think it's an interesting yes. movie. I think it got. Roger Deakins, you got some good performances, and I yeah, think you got you got Amazon Studios. Hey, come on, I mean, you have to give it credit. To the movie, like I said, the tone. A lot of movies, not a lot, but some movies try to to yeah, capture yeah. this tone, this sort of subtle, serious, somber type tone. And a lot of movies, they try hard and they fail. They fail terribly. And I think yeah. that that's something this movie actually does very well. Like you're invested, you're you're interested, you're watching these this stuff unfolding. You know even though it might have not unfolded like we, yeah. we wanted it to, it's still hard to really capture that that level of um, like seriousness in, in the subject matter. This and, would and, be you know, like a yeah. movie that I would like, if I had a movie night with my mom like back in the day, this would be mm-hmm. a movie I would pick because it's like, oh, it's based in reality. It's got like some little bit of mystery, a poor boy, that poor boy. My mom would go, yeah, oh, the poor boy, life is killing him. But, then, you know... You know that kind of thing, and it'd be mm-hmm. that that would be a good good movie for that. And I, I don't yeah. think I would pick it for myself to see it, but uh, definitely like a movie but with my mom. One thing I would say is that this is a great film, though, to watch in the cinema. I think I would have had a much different experience if I watched it at home or on a TV. I or think a I think the cinema changes a lot of things, yeah. and that's why I feel like cinema going is a sad and lost art. That's being I mean less and less people fewer and fewer people are uh, yeah. uh, really appreciating the, the big though, screen right? wouldn't you say yeah like just watching um, a movie a new experience some um 
someone trying something, you know, a, a team yeah. trying yeah. something. It's, it's friend really of ours, a uh, friend of mine, his name is uh, Scott Corelli. He lives in Los Angeles and he gets to go to all those smaller theaters, you know, that re-release movies and show them on 35, yeah. 70 millimeter. And he said he got to watch Batman, the 1989 one. While not liking it so much, got to see it in, in the big screen on 35 millimeter. On mm-hmm. the big and he said... And he said his perception was a lot different watching it like oh. that. So that shows you so, a yeah. thing or two. I stand with if Christopher the Nolan. Movie be- <laughs> the movie better. Boris. So I would, CSPs. I would, it, yes. it'd be hard to like recommend the movie, yes. but I would say that if you are intrigued by the subject matter, like a movie like this. Oh, there's a lot of subjects in this. So yeah. yeah. One of them you might and, like. And if you're sitting in cinema, you know, preferably with uh, a couple, a couple in the back, uh, an older woman on the right. <laughs> I think it's a exactly. really, uh, it was definitely an experience I don't regret. If I can put it that okay. way. Okay. Even though it was very long and it was a marathon, it really felt like a marathon towards the end. It was, it did feel like a marathon. It was a marathon. And uh, yeah, so go. You, I mean, if you want to help you guys bump think? their box think? office to three point nine million, that would probably yeah, be okay. That would be that would be good. I, I, I think I've told what mm-hmm. I had to say. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Cool. That was the Goldfinch. That is the film. Uh, the Goldfinch. And that is the review of the film with Jacob with uh, Timmy. I'm good job, me. boys. Good job, boys. Speaking you, of Batman, we'll you, be right back after these musical messages. <laughs>
Hey, hey, Phil, there we go. Thanks for that track. Uh, You're welcome. Who, You're but, welcome. But, but, but who was it by? Well, um, it's by this artist called Brandon, and his um, website is I Love Brandon. Same with his Twitter, same with his Instagram, all I that like kind that. of stuff. SoundCloud, I Love Brandon, but with an I, mm. E Y E, I Love Brandon. And you might hear his. You might recognize his flavor, anybody who remembers the Phil and Jake in Conversation days, because we played a song of his oh. back then as well. Oh, that's right. Lally, Five lally, years lally, ago. Lally, lally. That's awesome. It was a good song, too. It was a good song. So it was Brandon, called Magic Carpet Ride. shout out to the track. And shout out to yeah, Brandon. Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a chill, awesome Super chill. track. Remind me of Space, the TV series. Yes, me too. Me from too. Edgar Wright. So, Brandon, we were He's wondering super good. if you like Space. Maybe, maybe no, maybe yes. Do you like space? So, so guys, uh, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, I'm leaving yeah. you. <gasps> oh. I'm going to Berlin. Berlin, the lion's, the lion's den. den? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I go tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I go. You go. You go to Brew Dog. So the, that's the Berlin, bar. Germany, yes. not Berlin, um, <laughs> in Michigan. Some other place. Oh, no, Berlin, Michigan? Germany. Yeah, it's you know, it's a business trip, a design trip. Mm. Pretty cool. cool. I am man. excited. And you you are a designing go. man going to a designer's conference. Everything paid for you, by the way? Absolutely. Uh, so. oh, wow, absolutely. look at you, fancy pants. Fancy businessman. Is this your first cool. business trip out in the country, a different country? Yes, <laughs> oh. yeah, this is my first. Yes. Yeah. Have you, you spare no expense? Gone? <laughs> no, what? no, we premium. Premium. Pre- premium premium package. Premium is, Lu- is Lufthansa economy light. <laughs> oh, you don't get <laughs> business class? Premium. Oh, I guess you have to be no. executive executive man to get no because business. what we did was we have an educational budget and yep. we asked to use the educational budget part of it for our flights mm-hmm. and for accommodation so you know gotcha makes sense it's cool it was like you know if you think about it it's like two fifths of the educa- educational budget which is pretty good you know for an opportunity that's like pretty that. good i love berlin berlin's so, awesome i enjoyed oh, my never been right. never been see me yeah. neither i've never been Berlin's like really but chill vibes. What like, was your favorite part about Berlin and what was your overall experience? Um, Berlin Berlin is like like chill vibes. I think it has a really cool aesthetic, like super crusty and grungy aesthetic. Everything is kind of, you know, kind of torn down, but that that's what they're going for. Um, it, it's, that's you know, it's got like a My European... My telling me that everything feels new and rebuilt and stuff. It depends which, which part of town you go. <laughs> you go to Kreisberg. It's different, but, um, but it's... But that's the, generally like you go to like a coffee shop and everything's super industrial, and super broke down. But like that's just that's just the way it is. Like that's the idea of how, how it should look. Every there's like graffiti and just written stuff everywhere. Can you tell like the difference between east and west? Or I have no idea, man. That city is mm-hmm. so huge. I, I have no idea which part was west and which part was east. True, I, you probably true. can. You definitely can on the architecture and everything. But you know, you have nice museums in town, and then it is a huge city. I mean, we've been there for three days and kind of went around the place and just amazing food cool cats like walking around what, no. what is it like a center like a square or not really here's the thing like i it, like it's so big to me it felt like there's a bunch of squares maybe it could be the west east thing but it was like oh here's a whole city and it has this whole square and his old buildings and like it, it feels like in its old park it felt like a bunch of cities together and but have really good huh. like getting around you have the s-bahn the Udbahn, a train and just like we were like, one evening we're in a hotel in the other part of the city and we're like, oh, let's go to a cinema because like Berlin has like this, you know, Berlin theater cinema, you know, uh, you know, whole culture of small little cinema. So let's go watch something. But it was a lot of stuff in German and we, and we didn't understand that, but we saw Black Panther was playing in one of these places. So And it was the other, other side of town. We're like, let's go there. Oh, this train will just take you in like five minutes. We'll be there. So we just went to see a movie. It's great. That's cool. That sounds cool. Nice. Yeah, because I remember. I think so Germany, man, you're Berlin. going. You talked to Berlin on our, on our old podcast. I remember. So if you want to listen to Tim talk more about Berlin, check that out. Yeah, do it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Going tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, planes at uh, one around one p.m. That's not bad. That's five. really relaxing. Though, unfortunately, Tim, I think when you went, you went direct, right? Like Bratislava, Berlin. Mm, yes. Unfortunately, we have to go Zagreb, Munich, Munich, Berlin. Uh, you have to go the yes. Munich, the Munich. That sucks, <laughs> the Munich. <eunuch. laughs> 
<laughs> I've never but, heard that. Uh, but it's good, you know. We have a Thursday night, the uh, ah. Friday all day conference evening, Saturday back. Ooh, so so what? So evening? That's very cool. Evening for party. In the evening for party, uh, uh, Friday for sites mm -hmm. and look. Uh, podcast recording at the design meetup well if you're interested i know of a bar yes. where you can't go with clothes on Ooh la la, it will so make you take off your shirt and your pants and there you must go oh. in underwear or naked if you would so like underwear to is fine i guess just like if you don't want to that be sounds super... really german did i don't know why naked or i did not go to the club i could not convince my wife <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, well, you know, it's something you would see, but then I have to take off my clothes, and it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. A, a Berliner don't man that. told me about this. Place. That's why. That's why you need to work out and look cool. Look cool, and then want to be touched by strange but people. Yeah, but you never mind. Then that's probably not you, a good idea. You were touched. I remember in uh, was it Thailand or I think somewhere like where that? was I touched? Cambodia? What? Who was? Yes, what? For the massage. The massage. Oh, the old lady gave oh. me a massage when <laughs> yes. I when I had the little thong made out of. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, yes so I was, remember. That was great. Okay. Yes. Well, if you want to listen to Tim's journeys in uh, <laughs> oh. Thailand, <laughs> yes, go to the uh, old you podcast. Can go to the old podcast, you'll find it. It's not very difficult to find. Adventures in Thailand and Cambodia. That's true. That's true. That's right. Yeah, so I'll I'll give you guys an update when I come back. And it's true. I'll tell you what it was like. Was it good? Was cool. it bad? Cool. I mean, you could just we'll message us from there. Were you by Munich yeah. the Eunuch? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Munich the eunuch. Uh, All right. Say if I can, I can text you guys. What, what were we saying there, Phil? What? Uh, you could just text us from Germany. It's not. I'll like make a little video. Can't from can't from, from be texted. Yeah. <gasps> Maybe you should go see the movie for next week and. <laughs> That's a good but idea. That, but that, that'll be a waste because like going to Berlin and watching just a movie. You know? Well, you go <laughs> to screening at like one o'clock when you're like before bed, and you'll be like, oh, I can't. Play. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you'll cry at the end. At least, yeah. at least the people around. Okay, too um, so welcome back. This is the uh, this is the second movie we're here to yes. talk about, and second I'm, movie we're here. Um, yes. Don't forget, second movie we're here. Uh, so the Goldfinch. I had to pick something. It was that. The beers. The beers, my I, boy. The beers. Oh, the beers. I don't the have boy, anything. It's the same boy. thing. I'm still on Blue Lagoon. Didn't so I all. I moved on to another Brew Dog selection called the Sonic yes. Boom. Sonic oh, Boom, it's Sonic a, Boom, it's a French, Sonic Boom. Let me look this up, son. Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Dog. Sonic Boom. It's a French hopped IPA. So a bunch of French people <laughs> hop -a -hop. hopped, hop -a hopped on this IPA, and all of a sudden, it's an IPA. It tastes like an IPA, and it smells like an IPA. But does it taste hopped? That's the question. And does it taste? I French feel a little Frenchman in the hopped in my ah. drink. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh. Yes. What do you have, yes. Jacob? Ah, just local, local uh, dragon beer. Ah, this is my nice boy. It's good, German. man. We love that beer. But it is porter. Did I have a porter Ooh. on this um, on this podcast? I think I had once with them. Uh, I think I think so. Yes, you mentioned. But some. it it is a good porter. It is budget friendly. It. <laughs> <laughs> what accent is this? This is German. German. <laughs> it tastes nice. It's not too robust, but nice and. Uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and um, I, oh, good. Just, it gives me such a. I just like talking to people and like about bands. Talking to Germans about bands. Just like, ah, have you heard of Hummerschlips noch Habenluben? Yes. Or have you heard of discrepancy mappancy? Oh, your yeah, discrepancy mm. in the Ortgabel. They are a Canadian band from Nova Scotia. They play like a progressive uh, metal band. Why do I turn Russian? They Wait, play guys, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia in Canada band. or no? What? No, Nova Scotia. <laughs> yeah, 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 Nova Scotia. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. I got it right. Yes. Yeah, so that's my beer today, Porter. Uh, 6.5 alcohol. <laughs> uh, stronger. Wow. A little bit stronger, yeah? A little bit, yeah. Das ist, das your, ist your alcohol, uh, Timothy? It's pretty strong. My pretty alcohol, strong. good alcohol. My alcohol is... Uh, 6.5. Huh. Ooh, same as me. Your brother, we, we, we pick the good beer, yes. My, mine's just four. Uh, store Yo. cold, drink fresh, it tells me. Sonic Phil, Boom. Blue Lagoon, only 4%. Mine's just four. Oh, wait, I, 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 I forgot. Brewdog has these little descriptions. I want to read them. Here, let me, let me read you. The, mm -hmm. Oh, no, I can't read you the previous one because they put a sticker on it. Wait, let me remove the sticker. You can read it online, Tim. The All scoundrels. Right. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, so, so Clockwork Orange. Okay. What we should do? Should do? Should do Boris? Okay, I'll do Boris. A fully automated, seasonable, sessionable IPA infused with tangerine. 
a perfectly timed delivery of juicy citrus and mellow tropical fruits, followed by subtle hints of caramel and toast. Now, what you see? I, the savor in the end. All wrapped up in medium and body ale. A direct cut of the 21st century. Clockwork tangerine, IPI precision. For the people. <laughs> By the people. No. <laughs> Let's All right. Um, wait, wait, wait. My second beer. <laughs> cheese. Sonic boom. All right. This one's a hard read because it's darker. Welcome aboard our experimental range of turned IPAs. This is the out aligned in action. Scottish. Oh, there we go. Scottish with French hopes. Triscale. <laughs> wait, wait, I'll do French. Triscale. Wait, wait, let me do, I need a room with this. Do all of them. Do, do the combo. Do <laughs> French, German, and... deliver yeah. notes of tangerine, citrus, and frola back road with the <laughs> trademark bitter shockwave following, no, <laughs> in the week. Sonic boob. I, boob. <laughs> Sonic boob. <laughs> it is he so said powerful. Sonic boob. <laughs> it's so powerful. I give up. Oh, it cool. shoots out. It shoots out the milk. <laughs> <laughs> it shoots <laughs> out the milk in your mouth. Okay, let's speak of nipples. Speaking of yes, exactly. Speaking of, let's talk about latex boobs. Yes. And man let's talk asses. about. Let's talk about the 1995 art house sleeper hit, Batman Forever. <laughs> Is it sleeper it, directed hit? by directed by Joel Schumacher and Schumacher um, boy. And written by Lee Batchelor, Janet Scott Batchelor, and Akiva Goldsman, who has been writing a lot of action films. And I think he also wrote, unless I'm not mistaken, Commando. Got to check that one real quick. I want to see if I'm right or not. I mean, there were some, like, gearing up montage in both these movies. So oh, yeah. Makes sense. The very beginning of the film. Dude. So anyway. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, no, I'll get into blasting like and the... list of grievances. But you, 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 you I, I go I with your program. If, I can't wait. Like, explain the connection. for our No, he didn't do Commando. Sorry. Okay, then no. Well, no, yeah, okay. connection. How did you connect this? Yeah. Without, How did I connect besides, this? Besides How the you woman. How connect, yes? Okay, so... <laughs> the woman. So, uh, the goldfinch, right? Picked it. That's the only thing we had. And the minute I read that little synopsis where it's like, a boy is taken in by rich family, I knew. I knew what I wanted to watch after that. I felt like watching this film, so I just decided to put it right next to it. And it's Batman Batman Forever. Why? Because, look, orphan boy. He turns into an orphan. Who Who is an orphan boy? <laughs> well, the famous Bruce Wayne. Oliver and then Twist, soon to be Master boys. Dick Grayson. Mm. Then, but Dick's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> but then he gets taken in by a rich family. Well, what family do we have but Wayne? Bruce Wayne. The billionaire of Gotham. The richest of the of families. the city. Takes him in. We already have two. Look at that. Goldfinch. What is a goldfinch? It's a bird. What is a robin? Also a bird. <laughs> it's Batman Forever. Who's in both films? Nicole Kidman. Exactly. Boom! That's, that's three connections, <laughs> yeah. Boom. Sonic boom. I'm looking at my notes from this movie. It's like, it's like ravings of a madman. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. Okay, so what's your history with Batman Forever? Because it's been around for a long time. Um, have you seen this film before? I think I have. Tim. I think I have. I remember Joker and Two-Face. But I think... Yeah, the Joker was definitely in this film. Uh, I don't think I've seen it <laughs> since like seeing it back in the day where I think I've... I had the two movies kind of mushed together, Batman and Robin, this one, like not in my head knowing which one's which. They're very similar, yes. Um, but I think I did like maybe five or six years ago, like we were like, oh, let's watch all the Batman movies and just go, you know, first Tim Burton and then, then these Shumi boys and then, you know, to Nolan and whatever. But the Shumi boys. The Shumi boys. The Shumi boys. <laughs> this is my favorite band, yeah, Shumi boys. I'm trying to remember, but I think my, my first Batman experience w was... And still is my favorite Batman adaption, ad, adoption, adaptation, <laughs> adaptation, <laughs> to date of any format. Adoption is correct, right? Uh, it's true. Ah, that's the thing. Adopted. Uh, 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 yes. Adaptation of any form of, of the comics, and that's the animated series. God, I love that. It's great. The so animated good. series. Oh, man, is very I love good. it too. I agree. It's just it's such Tim a fine Paul mix Dini. of like Bruce being funny and Batman being funny, but it's also so serious. It's very stylized. The action's great. You got character development. It's just, it's so good. 
So yeah, I think I, it's also the music is fantastic as well. It's by um, Shirley boom, Walker, boom, 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 the, the late composer Shirley yeah. Walker, who has done I, she's done my favorite Superman theme and Walker, my favorite agree, Batman. She's a fantastic. Composer. But I don't know if I saw any of these movies first. I remember definitely seeing like Batman and Robin on TV. I, I remember that. Like, mm-hmm. I was I was confused. I'm, I think by the campiness and stuff like that because I always thought Batman was much more darker. I I remember the first time I saw <laughs> Batman symbol. My older, my younger, well, she's older than me, but she's the younger sister of my two sisters. She's like 11 years older and she was in high school and I was starting elementary school. And one of her friends, she had a black t-shirt with the golden Batman logo on it, which I think is from the Tim Burton movies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's that? And I was like, that's Batman. And then I maybe saw some pictures. I was like, oh, this is some dark spooky shit. That's all I knew. <laughs> I know. And that's it. That's what that's it, it is. Spooky uh, I think for for me, Batman has been around for a long time because, like, as a kid, you see Batman um, toys, Batman products, ah, and yes, stuff. The American and then, boy, the, and then yeah, the movies show up, and and you watch those. I think Batman Returns was the first one, so I was pretty scarred by that. And Batman <laughs> oh Returns yeah, that's the was this was the, the spooky penguin one, one, right? Was the the penguin one? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, Batman Forever came out. It was really nostalgic because I do remember, this is going to sound funny, but I do remember all the McDonald's toys that came out for, like they had McDonald's, um, those clear glass mugs of Batman Forever stuff. Do you, do you remember this at all? Uh, no. No. It came out in 1995. <laughs> so, no. so for me, it was I just very nostalgic. The, post, the logo, you know. the insignia. The, the logo of the bat symbol and the big Riddler question mark for me is just still nostalgic. And I still remember the toys and how like just nostalgic. It Wait, felt. you just knew about the toys or did you actually see the movie when it came out? I don't out? think I've seen the okay. film. I don't think I've seen the film. So wait, wait one second. I want to say that for me growing up was always Batman and Robin was like the new deluxe good movie. Yeah. Right. And Same Batman with me. Forever was like this weird, vague, you know, abstract art film that was bad and like is like a you know wait wait, wait. batman robin like was a staple and then forever was yeah weird and then you didn't know about the tim burton ones not really Me no. growing up yeah not really no okay i think i think i have but i didn't know how to categorize them because i was small i was like six seven and when batman and robin the... came out i thought the newest the best so batman <laughs> robin is yeah the best. i shared that as well yeah <laughs> what was your favorite part about batman and robin batman and robin well, yeah. Oh, no. You, did you say that was uh, your, the, the best? The newest, the best? That was the best back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I just blindly believed whatever they said was the newest and the best is the best. So George Clooney clearly is the better yeah. Batman. I still, is... still blindly bought the transparent Game Boy because the commercial exactly. sold them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the newest, the best. That's right. I did do that because I thought, hey, they're advertising it to be, to be the best. I can't believe. <laughs> I love it. I, love, I, I, I am like that. We talked about on multiple podcasts, but I can't I know. Get the over way the you the believed Phil, advertisement is the amazing. Key. Phil was the, the, the prototypical, like Chill. that's what they wanted for every child in the world, like to be like yeah. Phil. We put out a commercial, we sell yeah. a product, we, we tell us, tell you why. And you go and buy it. The next step is I'm at the I just, store. I can just imagine you sitting down, your mom. My mother, look, they say it on TV. I must have it. <laughs> you know what? I, I wouldn't be it's surprised if that was yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, Batman Sorry. Forever came out in 1995. Um, after the Tim Burton film, Schumacher was hired to do this and he made everything. Shoemaker. 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 <laughs> Joel Shoemaker. Was, uh, but why was why was why, Shoemaker hired for wrong. this? Why well, Burton was done, why, yeah, or why. was it like, oh, no more Burton? <laughs> oh, Schumacher. Okay, now well, come. here's so it's a good that's a good uh, a good question here. Um, so after Batman Returns, there was a big problem because lots of families were <laughs> upset about the film because this was because the marketing came before the film, and I don't know Tim if you know, hmm. but Tim Burton didn't want to do another Batman unless he had full creative control. Gotcha. Okay. After the first Batman. Yeah. So they said, yes, okay, you're allowed, you do your Batman movie because you want another Batman because it made so much. The first one was such a success. So and this please would be do the next one. one of the first or maybe the first, like a little bit more serious, darker comic book movies that were released? Yeah. Tim Burton... Uh, yes. Was able to do his movie. No, I call him Timmy uh, you know, Burton no himself. interventions of the studio. He made mm-hmm. his movie. He made his Tim Burton Dark Knight. I mean, I mean it was great. Tim Burton Batman was Returns. Awesome. I love that and movie. Lots of people liked it. Did you? Do you like it too? Yeah, I love it. Batman it's Returns. Like, so, Catwoman, yeah. Penguin. Very quirky. Very strange. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. bizarre. And, I love it. Uh, Christopher Walken. 
<gasps> and yeah. classic Tim Burton, Christopher Walken. Mm. Gotta have. Yep. He's in there. He's in there. And, um, the, f- problem was that the marketing was going at the same time as the production was going and they had to make a, they're making a big marketing blitz for the film. Mm-hmm. They had toys, they had a McDonald's happy meal tie in. What was what, what, like a penguin just dripping blood as ketchup? It, well, that's the funny thing. I actually remember this. I know not, a... not that I remember it, but I did have the toys of the happy meal. That's hilarious. Like mobiles, right? Like, like a cat woman. Mobile. Yeah. They had like a, like Batmobile cat, cat woman has her own mobile. The penguin has his own like car and stuff like that. <laughs> there was yeah, commercials yeah, yeah. for toys. It was all very child friendly, except for the film, obviously. Yeah. And then lots of parents were upset. So this whole upheaval, uh, also the fact that the movie didn't make as much as the first Batman made the studio a little bit nervous about Tim Burton wanting to do another one. And so they had a few meetings. This is what Tim Burton actually okay. said. He said, we had a few meetings about um, what to do next for the next uh, Batman. Mm-hmm. And while he was there uh, in the meeting that the studios, the, 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 the suits, the executives were kind of like going, D- do you want to direct another one? Do, do you, okay. you know, like maybe, you know, and he's like, no, no. Well, and he's like, and then after a while he just said, you, you don't want me to make another Batman movie, do you? And everyone was going, no, 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 no. no. And he said, yeah, I, from then I knew, I knew that yeah. they didn't want me to make but another one. how does one. that tie in with him, with the, with the canceled uh, Superman movie? Was that going on at the same time? Or was that later? That's later. Oh, so they brought him in, like the guy who ruined Happy Meals, like, come, come back to Superman. Weird, right? Same studio. Yeah, strange. It has to be different. Maybe, yeah, maybe but, because um, of Shumi. It was like, oh no, this 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 went yeah, this yeah, went yeah. all opposite the other way too much. Bring back so Shumi was was hired. Don't ask me why. I don't know. And we have this one, and this one is bright. It's <laughs> it's very theatrical. Uh, it has a lot of big statues. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of lot of yeah, like. And it's and it's going back to the '60s TV show, which is funny. This is this is my question. Like, is what? Because I was I was watching this and not seeing it for a long time. I was so confused. Is why is it the way it is? Like, what was the decision behind Shumi's mind that made him go campy, but not low budget campy, high budget campy, with like super sexualized visuals. Right, <laughs> like I, I, I was just genuinely I trying to figure out thoughts, honestly what's the idea here. Like, if he went like, "Oh, Tim Burton's too serious," let's make it, you know, old school '30s comic book slash '60s, you know, TV shows. It's it's all mm-hmm. slapstick and everything. Why is it like, like Nicole Kidman is just like <laughs> Nicole Kidman? She's just like ah, oh, Bruce, do me hot. Like she's just like walking around. <laughs> So, like, this is the entire point of her. I don't know what she's doing there. And her hair is like, it's amazing. It's like from those, like the TV show, just like poofed up and she's just walking around. I, I, everyone, I don't know. Like from the start, like I, I, I remember like everyone makes fun of uh, Batman and Robin because the bat nipples, right? Well, they're bat nipples in this one too. Th- that's what I'm saying. From the beginning, it's like, did everyone forget? Like <laughs> you, you are thrust into bat nipples and bat thongs just immediately. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Robin gets his own bat nipples as well in the end. What is That's it? Right. Is his history like, like stage and like Broadway musicals or something? I don't like know. That? If you watch, if you watch other Joel Schumacher movies, they're pretty normal and they look normal. Like he made Phone Booth. Do you remember that movie? I'm gonna, yes. I gotta look this up because this is this is Phone ridiculous. Phone Booth has Chris, not Chris, Collins. Collins. <laughs> I'm call- Colin. Who are, you, who are you calling, Jacob? Wait, Colin wait, wait, Farrell. Wait, wait. Colin, Colin Farrell. Colin, Colin Fa- Farrell. Colin Farrell. <laughs> Farrell. He's in that movie, and he the whole movie is in a phone booth. Uh, listen, <laughs> that's why it's called phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I think Phil said it well. Was that when we're watching the movie? Uh, he said that basically the film, you know, knows the premise. It knows that Robin has to become Robin, and so on. And the movie just finds ways to make it happen. Yep. That's, that's basically the movie. Okay, you know? so Schumacher's first screenplay was the musical drama Sparkle. <laughs> well, well what, I think... What more do you want to hear? a lot hear? of things. Here. Um, I, I guess. you know now. It's Sparkle I think, and, for me, I think Joel Schumacher, I think for what it's worth, I think I, I really find it fascinating, the whole gotham how it looks like with all the colors because you know you don't see that you don't see that a lot uh-huh. right in you don't movies. it's like it's like a it's like a weird 90s cartoon I, I, it's just bizarre in the way 
it's I'm just I'm so baffled. I want to know what <laughs> the thought process was. Why he went with this direction and and the Dutch angles and there's wind the blowing angles, yeah. everywhere and there's like newspapers always flying places and everything's like super contrasty and every but I do love the green and the blue the, the green, green and, and the blue. blue everything's high yeah and then like high saturation and there's and everything's like a like a movie. Tr- design like oh jim carrey has a device on his head it's like you you remember like the uh, back to the future <laughs> the, the thing that um doc brown on his head well yeah, this yeah, is yeah, like yeah. a thousand times weirder than that it's just like everything's like mm-hmm. i'm just i'm not sure well, I like think the strangest thing about the movie is that uh i don't know like for instance like watching it again for me was to be honest with you very uninteresting. It was very interesting. Uninteresting. What do you, what do you guys think? Watching the watching experience. Um, I was honestly like I was looking forward to watching this again because I haven't seen it for but a good why? number why? of years. I was wondering why? Because like just the style, the design, and the stupid nature of the whole thing. Like it's just stupid, and I I would like to see something stupid mm-hmm. and fun. You know, it's also fun. I thought it was gonna be fun and stupid, and I don't know. Was it and, fun? Because uh, it's was weird. It fun? For it was me, it was not fun. Unfortunately. So. Watching this again, I was disappointed. I didn't remember it being this kind of plotting. People, people talk that you don't understand what they're saying. I have no idea what 90% of the dialogue <laughs> in this movie was. People can talk for five minutes and you're like, it's true. What? I was trying to, I was really trying to figure what out what the was hell going did you on. Do? Like there's conversations between Val Kilmer and Nicole Kidman. And I have no idea what they're talking about. They're talking about some mm-hmm. voodoo dolls or something like that. And I'm just, true. first of all, they're overdubbed all of pretty much most of the movie. That's right. They were right. I knew it. I knew it. And 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 then I'm looking and like they're saying words, but these words mean nothing to me. <laughs> what is the context? Like the, the the person who made most sense was Jim Carrey. I understand what he was talking about. I think the Jim Carrey, the Jim Carrey. The That's Riddler. interesting because he's the, the he's the craziest Carrey. guy in this. Because I think just I, doing Jim Carrey things. Was, Surfs up, big oh, Kahuna. Yeah. Oh yeah, I wonder what to say. I think not, he can mode. We please not go. This isn't going to be two hours, right? No, 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 no. I think please. Why Jim Carrey made most sense because I think all of his stuff was ad libbed and wasn't written because the written things made no goddamn sense. No, they didn't. There's four writers <laughs> on this. What do you think? I think <laughs> I think it's zoned out, and then and then Dick was adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how. I don't remember the conversation. Master Dick. I don't remember the conversation, but he was adopted and he was bo- and he was fitnessing around the building. <laughs> he was he was yeah, too he was. into the the door. Uh, it was like into the bad cave. Yes. If, if anyone ever yes. plays instead of just Raider, walking yeah. and putting yeah. it. By the way, I want I I will recommend anyone who can find it. Kevin Smith's commentaries on all the Batman <gasps> movies are fun to so listen talk about to. This. I gotta hear so this. Fun. What does he say about this one? Oh, it's hilarious. You should watch it. Oh, just. I watched it right. I want to watch it again. I watched it was parts very of it. Funny. I think maybe even the whole thing with you. I can't remember. Okay, can we? Can I? Can I just really do do a quick synopsis so everybody yes, knows what's sure, going you on? Ahead, you can refresh ahead. yourself. I'll do it very fast. So, Batman Forever, uh, the Two Face attacks Gotham City. He's an old uh, district attorney who turned got his face turned into acid dude, one half, dude, and he turns insane. News, wait, dude, give me a second. No way, no way, yeah? wait, 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 wait. When when Val Kilmer is looking at at the news when when yeah. when, when, when uh, Two Face gets acid on his face and all of a sudden Batman in costume ass on his face jumps out yeah he just court- jumps, jumps out from jumps <laughs> into the courtroom I, 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 he was there the entire time that was he's amazing. just sitting there just Batman in the courthouse this is like this is campier <laughs> than Lego Batman for God's sake okay continue Philip I'm sorry and uh, that's how the opening goes he tries to do a crime and uh we introduce him. Uh, meanwhile, in the Wayne Enterprises building, there is an up-and-coming um, eager worker whose name is uh, Edward Nigma, who works on, who made a mind control thing that I still don't know why it's what its purpose is. It's VR. Why he, he made VR. <laughs> makes it something like that. And uh, his idol is Bruce Wayne. But when Bruce Wayne shows up to visit, he rejects him and says, no, I'm not going to mess with people's minds. And he's like, you're supposed to understand. And so he turns into the Riddler after seeing the... Um, after seeing um, Two Face attack uh, a circus with the Anderson Indians, and he then 
Uh, but in the meantime, there's this crazy lady. Her name is Chase Meridian, who's just super thirsty for Batman for no reason. <laughs> and it's ridiculous. Nice, nice it's, use it of makes uh, you... millennial slang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Millennial. Hip That's me. I'm hip with the kids. You're hip with the boys. And I'm hip <laughs> with the boys. And she's like, it's so childish. It's so funny to watch. I love it. It's so stupid and awkward. And... Um, and and she talks to Bruce Wayne, talks to Batman. She, I want Batman, but I don't want Batman. I want the Bruce Wayne. Oh, I think I love Bruce she Wayne. She turns on the Batman. bat signal just to get. That's right. That was just ridiculous. to get laid with Batman. And that that's was right. A and super improper use of the bat. So signal. remember that just circus I mentioned with that two face. The two face was was attacking. Um, guess what? There were the flying Graysons. There's this family of acrobats, and they got murdered by Two Face. And who survives? Well, it's Master Dick. That's what and I he, missed. And he. Ah, yes. And he was sad because he couldn't save his family. And guess what? Dick. Bruce Wayne saw that and in the crowd. Remember what Bruce Wayne said? I need that dick. Yes, yes, I know. He goes, he goes, Harvey, I'm Batman. <laughs> it was great. I loved it. And no one hears and him. No, no one. one hears him. And he doesn't repeat himself. He just, no, he just no, he, I think, I think the one. second he said that, he realized that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so um, because of the connection that he has with uh, dead parents, um, he, he decides to help Dick. Um, yeah, and the only way to help. Inviting him to his house, taking him in. Way... Dick doesn't like it. Yeah, but the only way to help Dick and to get Dick <laughs> to come in to the house is to <laughs> yeah. show him his big motorcycles. <laughs> and then true, Dick is like, true. I love motorcycles. And Batman's like, I'll, yeah. I'll be, I, I'm, a, I'm a 32-year-old looking man, but you can adopt me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so they adopt I'll come Dick to your house. into the house. <laughs> you and your old man. I'll see your big motorcycles. I've been in the circus. Exactly. I know how things go. I'll fix your motorcycle. What do you need, yeah, Bruce? Yeah. Well, and I mean, uh, and so he's Dick. rebellious. Sometimes he takes the and he finds out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. And then the entire the entire half of the next half of the movie is just uh, basically uh, the bad guys won very soon when he in one day they turn um, the Enigma, you know, his brainwave device into a conglomerate. Remember that? Like, it's just like you know, the next there's, day. There's, there's a montage of of them like taking over the world because the VR Enigma thing is is amazing, yeah. right? And they're like, oh, we have we have one in every house. Guess what? In the end, Two Face like, ah, oh, fuck that child. Just shoot some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just leads to nowhere. It's nothing. Nothing. It leads to nothing. That's what I'm saying. They already win by like the middle of the movie, and like they're already the the big company or whatever they are. They've yeah. succeeded, and. The rest of the movie is just Bruce Wayne going, I'm not Batman. Oh, no, wait, I am Batman. <laughs> and then, you're not my partner. You're never going to be my partner, Robin. You can't I mean, have he's not bat Robin. nipples. Well, and, and Robin. You can't have the bat nipples. Robin slash Dick. All he wants to do is uh, kill Harvey. The entire sure. film, he never gives it up. He's never like, you know, Batman, I've been hanging out with you. Maybe I shouldn't kill people. Maybe I should stop this. He but just like, me. hasn't it been hanging out with him at all? Batman's like, has. stay here, read books with Alfred. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's true. Let true. me do my bad business. But I'm an acrobat. It's in my blood. Yeah, and then he steals yeah. like Batman's car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the synopsis, right? Right, right, guys. And pretty much, yeah, he's, he, it's, that's, it's just it's just Robin going. You're my part. We need to be partners. We need to be partners. And Batman's like, no, no, no. And then one time he talks to <laughs> Batman's like, he Nicole talks Kidman, to Kidman, Nicole Kidman. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes Ooh, to Nicole yeah. Kidman's house, and he's like, I'm Batman. Here I am. I'm in. I'm in full <laughs> regalia. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've got and then she's some regalia. Batman booty call. And yeah, like, seriously. This no. is the Dark Knight, everybody. <laughs> and she's like, and she goes, Do you mind if I keep the mask? <laughs> and, she, and she's like no i actually i like another man and, he, just and after, then he gives the bat smile the bat, the bat smile. smile i want to say this is one thing i remember 100 percent from the, the kevin the, yeah. smith commentary was i think there's no other like movie with batman where you have batman smiling in the suit like an ba idiot. Batman, no movie. So in, in the animated bad. series, he smiles a lot. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but he know? does it in in character and like it, because because just because it animated just one line that slightly mm -hmm. curves. You know, it looks good. But when Val Kilmer's <laughs> puffy <laughs> cheeks, I am Batman. I am the like, Bruce Wayne. Mm, and I can't take credit. I can't take credit for this joke, but um, because it's in the 
commentary with Kevin Smith, but every newspaper in Gotham has wonderful four by sixes of uh, Batman and beautiful lit. So everybody can look at his chin and go, hmm, is this Bruce Wayne? He looks like Bruce Wayne. The most famous uh, Gothamite in Gotham. Yeah, yeah, no way. Tim, are you okay? (laughs) Sorry, you just said that as I was drinking my beer and it kind of went the wrong hole. Oh, no. Sorry. (coughs) And basically, the whole last half of the movie is just, I'm not Batman. I am Batman. I'm not your partner. Yes, you are my partner. And then finally they go, we're partners. And they go and take down the Riddler who just wants to get mind juice from everybody he wants to be he wants to be strong. smarter every day <clears throat> good yeah, youtube which... channel <laughs> really it's called smart every day <laughs> yeah it's great cool Justin cool from every smarter day he does like scientific stuff and like films mm. like in slow motion things you haven't seen it's pretty good excellent and what? um well yeah then of course oh, him, batman him. takes him down with help of robin his new sidekick with and help of robin and then, and then the best thing happens when they confront uh, when 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 <laughs> Batman a, is saved both Chase man. and Robin from uh, the Riddler, who is out of commission because he took him down. Batman. There, at the end of the film, there's Two Face holding a gun at Batman, and uh, he's about to shoot him. And then Batman says, "Hey, you're a man of uh, you, you you know what, what did he say? Chance. He said you're a man of chance. Why don't you?" Flip the flip your coin to see if you can do that. Flip goes, the coin. That's right. Oh, I remember. That's, that's right. That's right. You you you're, you're always a great friend, and <laughs> this whole movie, uh, all Batman kept telling Robin was, "Vengeance is never the answer. If you kill him, don't kill him. You know you should never kill him." No. And then what does adopt he do? him rather than kill him? And then what happens after this? He throws the freaking tell- coins in the air. He throws a bunch of other coins. So when so when Two Face throws coins? his coin, when he keeps his <laughs> coins, his whole like every this entire movie, he should be running around here. You could hear. <laughs> he literally, he literally <laughs> kills Two Face, and he was the one guy telling Robin the entire film not to do that. Yes, I, I think it's meant to look like he kills him accidentally, but you know. Well, and then retarded. they're like, "Oh, I, I." He should have saved him. Then he should have like captured him and not let him fall. Yeah, he should, yeah, he should he go until so I kill those people. Anyway, I, the I have movie a pack of coins that I carry every day, <laughs> so I can get my coffee in the middle of a night when I feel tired. <laughs> go to the coffee machine and put those goddamn coins in there. Take do you see me put the coins in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my and notes and it's like I've lost my mind. It says here Jugasm, The Riddle Mr. E, Why the Ass Shot, a lot of exclamation points. Fine movie. Oh yeah, trailer. Mr. E. Joy Joygasm. Fine form from nineteen ninety seven. Oh yeah, I wanted to see I really want to see if like in nineteen ninety seven because wait, no, this came out in nineteen ninety five. Yes. Was internet a thing back then? I really wanted to see like whether mm. people think like Batman fans of the comic book or maybe the Batman fans of Tim Burton movie, this comes out and they go to cinema and like, what? I just want to see, like, internet people raging, but I forgot to do that, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. It takes a lot of uh, responsibility. I, any of you like, listeners, do you know any of, like, old forums from back in the day that are still online? If would you love can maybe to look it. up some, yeah, like, some Batman reactions. I, I would really want to see what people thought when it came out. Because now it's like, yeah, site called, knows, Philip, uh, the, the message boards back in the day? Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> remember Furbisher and the Jedi? Oh man, I don't man, I I would love to know. I just don't know where where it is. It was mm. it was something, but it was like these are message boards from before there was like the World Wide Web. This was back in 1983. Mm. You could hear people writing different so things. So here's some here's some some crazy man notes here. Um hear why me. does Gotham have Statue of Liberty? <laughs> it's a big question. I th- that made me laugh. I don't know. <laughs> um let's see uh CGI helicopters. I don't know what that meant. Oh, here's a great one. Concrete breaking grappling hook is what was amazing, by the way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The grappling hook. <laughs> um, uh, it can do anything. Uh, chicks dig the car, I guess. That was that's a that's a big one. The Harvey Dent news real, but yeah, at the court, yeah, I don't know. It was just like I didn't like maybe attitude is, is, is everything you need in a movie. Maybe if I was like drunk and like, oh, let's have a good time and we'll laugh at this movie, but it was I just, kind of insisted to watch the movie with Jake, so we just watched it together. And and I, I I watched it by myself and I just sat there. And I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. What what's what why why this movie? Why honestly me? tell me, Shumi. honest honestly, I I I thought it would be fun because um, yeah. I I mean, 
It's a good attempt. You know? I, I mean, I uh, watched it. <laughs> I watched it. You know, a couple of years ago, I liked it. I I enjoy watching it from time to time with commentaries, mostly. Like, there's a lot of people who make commentaries from this stuff, and I liked well, it. So was I thought it I could put to it be back. Serious? Was it? Was it? Was it meant to be serious? But it, it it ended up being schlock because I'm wondering if you wanted to make it camp, make it more camp, make it make it super camp, make it deliberately just, or was this? deliberate but it was like you know with studio it's kind of half there could be could be or was it like maybe he didn't want to go all the way there it's just i, think I mean they did want there or to the there were know. attempts of of trying to give it some kind of some kind of gravity with you know, what uh, I think you know the was. flashbacks with his parents being those dead. flashbacks like they're the only part of the movie that doesn't look like bonkers like it was like from yeah, a different yeah. movie like that rain and just the there's lighting. another connection what with the goldfinch <laughs> What's the connection? The bird? Different, different stories. I guess. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. No, mean. but I want to say, that, don't you guys think that um, it was uh, supposed to be like a play, like a theater play? Like, it a, felt lot like of, a, theater a lot of play? the sets are very in that vein, right? Don't you guys think? Yeah, yeah. They're very like, they're very setty. I mean, mm-hmm. like, he, he, like, like I don't know if there's any point of going into an actual criticism, but. I guess it it came across my mind that you have two villains, you know, you have Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones, and they're both hamming it up. I think it they're doesn't, hamming it up ultra, but they're both like <laughs> plus ultra crazy characters. Like you can't have two. Like you have to one that plays the straight man and one plays the bonkers. Yeah, one. They're I don't both know why this is off so... their rocker. They're both like super <laughs> like highly <laughs> just highly laughing, energetic, like laughing. little children hugging each other and giggling. <laughs> It was so bizarre to watch. It's like, wh- wh- why isn't like Harvey Dent super serious? And then you have the Riddler and you get annoyed. Like you have some kind of character. And just like, how did these two get anything done? I'm I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I know. Just curious, how do they Drew work? Barrymore's in it for some strange reason. Oh yeah, they're like these, like these women, more sexual women. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Dates. Wait, I don't know, guys. Like, was for me, Riddlers? like, like watching the movie. No, no, no. She like, was. It didn't matter really, but at the beginning it was like, remember how it was like split in the middle? Like the his house, <laughs> like the two face house is just oh, one yeah, side yeah. is normal and you know and nice, and the other side is you know. For when me, I was a kid, I thought that was so cool. For me, the thing that's like super annoying is that like movies like this, they just don't have any continuity, in the sense that like you're watching the film and it's just a sequence of scenes. And like you said, Tim, like just the tech, the text, what they wrote in the script is nonsense. You know, like it's just like. <laughs> They're it's just, just saying stuff, goop. right? Yeah. It's just gobbledygook. <laughs> and it's, you're watching, and it's like, what What am I watching, and why? Like, why am I watching this? That's true. And I, I hate mean, that you got to do this. We got to do this for the actors, podcast. You know, like like uh, uh, Jim Carrey, you know, and these A-list is, actors. And it's like, all they're doing is just regurgitating this just garbage. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but it really feels like that when you're watching the film. Yeah. You're just like, what are these sequences? And then the movie's so long. And it's like, I mean, it's come on. We watched <laughs> the, the action Goldfinch. sequence in the end where like climbing some weird tower or something. I don't know. The, it, it's, what was happening? I don't know. I just, I'm sorry I got... because like, we, you know, we watched The Goldfinch and that was a long <laughs> film, right? But but we were invested yeah. and we were trying to yeah. be interested in the characters. But this is just like, just... This is tomfoolery. Just, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> And I just do you think, do you honestly think annoys me. Shumi hates Batman. He's like, ha, no, I would have. No, I think I he was trying to do up. some kind of a theatrical flamboyant piece. You know, some kind honestly, of. Movie. Honestly, honestly, um, I don't know how many behind the scenes documentaries you've watched on this, but the I have none, the, absolutely. None. Oh, the Blu-ray, the Blu-ray, and like the DVDs, they had they have mm-hmm. really nice in-depth documentaries, and there's a lot of people talking about their experiences. Mm-hmm. And Schumacher, to me, felt like he was sincere and he wanted to make. A movie that was different from Tim Burton's, but still was family friendly, so you know anybody can watch it, right? But so it was, she was like, "Oh, people are gonna love this more than Tim Burton because this is like fun." Yes, and also he doesn't deny that he didn't really mind when the studio told what to do mm-hmm. as well. Okay, so it was like lots of money. Let's just have some fun. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. It does make sense. And he also he also apologized for Batman and Robin. <laughs> Well, you he should said, apologize for this too. Yes, this is, yeah, I agree. This is no I agree. excuse. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I agree. At least that one has Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know? Oh, that's right. What well, no, killed no, the dinosaurs? Say, but at least that movie... The Ice Age! 
is the whole movie is you can watch it and have a good laugh. You really can. Batman and Robin, from what I remember, a lot of silliness in that film. Yeah. This movie is silly, but at the same time, it's I'm not sorry, silly enough. It's just boring. Stuff, parts yeah. of the movie are boring. Is 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 Nicole Kidman's character re- related in any way to um to 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 Commissioner Gordon? Mm. No, no. Why? Would he, by the way, he's an old ham in this, just like an old, yeah, ham. yeah. <laughs> useless old ham but like <laughs> ham. so so she like she went to the, to the roof of the police house and turned on the bat signal mm-hmm. crazy because she wanted some batman booty batman yep. booty yep. the bat booty the bat you booty. saw some bat booty we saw some bat booty when he was at the beginning yeah we did. putting on his did. and I remember like it was like pretty like the bat movie looked cool i thought that was a nice one really nice. i don't know the the stupid spoilers were wiggling because they were made out of cheap plastic and that's the right they were they, they were, were. Around, just like <laughs> blum, 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 blum. come on um but it, like like room. the movie and the music i love the music um it's by elliot goldenthal and the music actually um, i want to say the music is great i have to agree i, I do i don't remember music. it i would have to probably listen to it again. maybe because oh, it's a little more nostalgic but i think it's a really good bah, 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 really good score bah, 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 i guess because i'm like i really bah, bah, like the tim burton bah, bah, one bah, 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and but it's funny, like, as well. sure, sure. Yeah. But this one is um, the composer. He's a he's a classically trained New Yorker composer, but he does he actual. While he writes, his he actually bits. he does actual symphonies. You know what I mean? Like he does yeah. he does actual stuff like that. Sometimes he does movies, and for this one, he put all kinds of crazy like instruments and stuff like that. And his idea for this, I love this. His idea mm-hmm. was. Uh, trying to imitate what kids would do when they were playing with action figures. Like, they would make their own music, you know? Okay. And so he tried to make the theme sound like that. Like, dun 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 I like that. That's a really interesting... It's a good analogy. That's crazy that there's such a such a difference between this was the last one before Christopher Nolan comes back. Yeah, I mean, it's 10 years. It's 10 years. Pretty much, and and it's it, and it's not something you know like Batman has gone in the comic book universe at least has has gone through you know revisions like in the eighties you know when when all all the dark Batman Frank Miller came out. Yeah, yeah Frank Miller and like uh, Killing Joke and all, all all the other you know whatever like Batman went through its own changes but it's funny in in, in the movies that yeah from <laughs> Tim Burton spooky horror mm-hmm. stuff to this campiness and then you know Christopher Nolan's like realistic whatever Batman thing it's pretty crazy. It's just such, a, such an opposite, yeah. And then we have Ben Affleck and Zack people. Snyder. Also, can it's, you guys believe that this movie begins opens with a joke? Yeah, that's and what the, I was gonna say. The music's the operatic. Is, it looks dark, and there's Alfred. He's back, played by Michael Go. What is how do you, how do you say how how would you pronounce that? It's Goff, right? Michael Goff. Goof. Anyway, Goof. yeah, Goof. and. There he is. He's <laughs> Batman is there. He's standing there. The music's like da 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 da, and what is what happens? And then I Alfred remember. Goes, Shall you take the sandwich? And oh. Batman goes, "I'll get drive through." Mm. That's the opening. And the second worst joke <laughs> in the movie is where Robin goes, "Holy metal, Batman!" Yeah, holy rusted metal, Batman. And you're like, oh, they're referencing the old show. And he's like, no, it's metal and it's holy. There's holes in it. Wow. I know, right? Oh. That's exactly, and then, and then Batman that's exactly just goes, the, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, he goes, oh. Ah, Good oh. one, Dick. But do you see, do you see, do you see what I'm talking I about? I see, I see. <laughs> and, and if you wanted to know, just one more little fact about the behind uh, the scenes. Um yeah. Joel Schumacher said that Val Kilmer was pretty childish and impossible to work with. Yeah, that's what I wonder, usually like, say about Val Kilmer. Really, Val Kilmer? No way. Yeah, I think you should you should read about. Um, do you know the the movie, The Island of Doctor Monroe? I think that's what they called yeah, it. Yeah, uh, The Island of Doctor yeah. Monroe. Yeah, yeah, and they did a movie in the nineties. <laughs> And you have the combination of two most impossible actors. You have Al oh, no. on one side, and then you have, uh, what's his face? Uh, Marlon Brando on the other side. Marlon Brando. Really? <laughs> Old Marlon Brando, who's like, who was impossible. Yeah, and then he's Val terrible. Kilmer. And they both hated the director, and they sabotaged the movie, and the director almost lost his goddamn mind doing that movie. So that <laughs> movie is really freaky. It's like The a, Island it's, of Dr. Moreau. 
It's like a book. It's like about scientists making freaky things on. It's an like a, it's like right? a dude who's who. I don't know if he's sent there or he ends up in an island where like this weird doctor is like combining animal DNA with people, and he's got these like animal people running around, and like his <laughs> his like assistant is is Val Kilmer, and um and I don't know, I watched that movie like on TV a long time ago. I was really confused by it, but I remember reading about the whole experience. It's like. I think like Marlon Brando would have an earpiece and they would have to tell him lines and he would repeat them. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. For like, Superman, the, yeah, for Superman the movie, I heard that they said that Marlon Brando doesn't he doesn't memorize his lines, and so he they had people with papers, yeah. cue cards to. I don't know. I don't like that very much. I think that's this well. Speaking of the Kevin Smith commentary of of this movie in this new Kevin Smith movie, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, Val Kilmer plays. A oh no way he He's plays. In he, so so. In, did you guys ever watch Jane's uh, Silent Bob Strike no, Back? No, didn't watch any no. of them. It's basically like in the old, like they're like the two characters that are in all his like little universe movies, right? You know, Jane Silent Bob, and I think they in one of the movies they write a comic about them, and then in that movie they're like annoyed because they make a movie about the comic right because this is our 2000s where like all the like spider-man and x-men movies are coming up so they they make a movie out of the comics and they're pissed off because they didn't get any royalties or money because it's based on them so they go into hollywood and try to get the money back right like, like that's a story oh that's the movie okay and the new one is like a they made a reboot of the movie like, so i guess oh. i don't know i don't know what that is <laughs> and in the reboot movie because and the comic book characters is Blunt Man and Chronic. I think it's like a weed thing. Of course and, it is. And then the Batman looking one is played by Val Kilmer. But it's like, huh. Chung, it, but it's Chung as Val Kilmer, by the way. It's well, the, maybe, maybe Val Kilmer had a reformation on his attitude because not only was he difficult to work with, apparently Time Lee Jones was also hard to work with in this film. Tommy I guess he Jones, didn't want to do this. He looks like he's having a blast. I know, but apparently he just did it. He said he did it because of his kids, but also... Really? <laughs> and apparently K- Jim Carrey mentioned not too long ago that uh, Tommy Lee Jones was just hated him and just, huh. just did, not like, did not like Jim Carrey. And apparently t- Tommy Lee Jones told him, I cannot sanction your buffoonery. It makes sense. The, honestly, there's 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 a bizarre tension between two of them in the movie that yeah, <laughs> it all it makes sense now. Yeah. So there you go. That's Batman and Robin. It is. It is truly as Batman in a Robin. city of justice. Well, no, no, city it's Batman Forever. <laughs> oh, sorry. Whoops. I mean, Robin's in this movie. It's hard to remember. I mean, this. Batman sure. gets and Robin are in. The also, film. what about the just real quick? What about what do you think of the riddles, Tim? You were mentioning something like. How did they? How did Alfred and 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 Bruce oh, actually decipher that riddle? Remember that the deciphering of the riddle in the end when they figure out. It's like out, let's just let's just put some riddling in there because the Riddler is supposed to be that kind of character. So like the riddles, riddles are fine. You know they're like classic riddles, but then how they combine all the riddles and figure out where Joker yeah, is? Mr. Impossible. E. You mean the Mr. Riddler, e. not the Joker? Yeah, whatever. E. Did I say Joker? Enigma. No, you know the yeah. Mr. E. Edward Enigma. That was. That was Edward, that, well, can you guys just answer me this? Uh, <laughs> Riddle me this. Did you guys notice that Edward Batman? is a totally different character before he becomes the Riddler? Batman, you say? Totally different. He's like a dork dude, right? Yeah. And he's like, but he's obsessed know, with like the like the Riddler. He has like a collection of Riddly things there. You know, honestly, saying, the tie they're, they're was both... so loose. If if you look at the comic and well maybe not the comic but I don't know I didn't read any of Batman comics but if you look at the Batman animated series, Joker is always the one who is elaborate. Riddler. No, I'm talking about the Joker. The Joker okay. is the one who always has these elaborate traps and elaborate sets, and it's always theatrical and it's just to prove a point, but doesn't actually want to harm Batman, right? But it's like it's always like this whole bananas crazy thing. But to me in this movie. <laughs> Both of these characters, who I think would have a different characteristic and different approach to catching Batman, are doing the Joker thing. They're all like, <gasps> yeah, they're just sets. giggling and laughing, giggling and laughing. Like, like they both feel like two Jokers that are not Joker. Like, well, why, why even <laughs> yeah. have these two buffoons here? That's like, why you keep calling him the Joker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm confused. Like, why, why, why have Two Face when he's going like, ha ha, hee hee, poo poo, you know, <laughs> <laughs> poo poo. <laughs> 
Ja. Yeah. Ah, well. Ah, whatever. There you go. There it is. That's there that's is. Batman. I also, recommend wait, wait, you wait, finding wait, wait, wait. Kevin Smith's commentary. If you're friends with Shumi, can can you ask him? Why he did it? Why you did it? Why you kill those people? And also, you just why did you kill those people? This movie took ages to finish with the <laughs> climax and stuff, and then it just. <laughs> Ends in two yeah, seconds. Yeah, just ends. Ends in two seconds. Yeah, that's true. It's just like a He's like, but I found down. my new love. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found. You're pretty good at Val Kilmer, Jim. Do it again. Oh, thanks. I found my new love. <laughs> you. Yeah. And then he's like, Kiss I'm no. Me. I'm. I'm both Bruce Wayne and Batman. I didn't even know there was like a. Um, Bradman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Brad Pitt. <laughs> and now I have a dick. Bruce Dick. <laughs> what's, what's his name? Uh, Grayson. 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 Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson in my house, who He's acrobatically. Like, <laughs> I have oh. a butt. I'm butt man. I'm butt man. Yeah, you know, it's honestly, I'm sorry, Phil, but I just, I just yeah, didn't it, it really was like a good attempt. I, I didn't like it. Okay. Okay. But that was that was suffering. That was true. Yeah, I agree. I, it really was hard. It was hard. Well, on the good you know, side, don't have to. We'll never watch it again. Like sure. this no, podcast. I no, yeah. that's good. I mean, Never. I still have Batman and Robin, so we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather watch like some Adam West Batman. I yes. haven't seen any of that stuff. Well, Batman the movie is not bad. It's funny. The, 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 actual, 70s? The, the Adam West Batman the movie. Does he, have, still, does he have his eyebrows on his mask? Yep, sure yeah. he does. Good and the ending is hilarious. Phil, is, the that the is, one, hilarious. is that the one where they climb up buildings with the rope? Yes, I yes. Can't yes the ropes. Ropes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, anyway, well, I just wanted to say that the uh, the stupidest moment. I remember this was before we watched it the last time. Absolute stupidest, stupidest moment, moment in the movie was he's like, "Alfred, shall we go by land or by <laughs> air?" And he has to show. He has point. to show what, which <laughs> shall we choose. The boat turns on. <laughs> and then but it's like dick by it's sea like, or by air. How about both? But 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 the bat bat plane. Um, it's like a prototype or something like that. It looks pretty cool. It's hanging by its feet. You know, it's like a bat. He flies it and then they immediately shoot it down. Well, yeah. And not only that, but Robin's boat also gets it's shot exploded. down. <laughs> Whatever. Nothing honestly. good happens. But then remember that one part where he had to like turn his entire body? Dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he had to, you remember he's on the, in the bat wing and then he goes through the, the bat signal on Gordon, the wet blanket, the wet <laughs> <animal that this. laughs> and the ham. Is the ham, the old ham. And he just goes, yay. And then, oh, yeah, like and then the, there's a, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Batman turns around. He can't turn his head, so he turns his entire torso and then put his thumbs up. It's <laughs> <laughs> many gifts were made that day. Many, many gifts, probably. Oh God, I, I, I want to see the bat smile again. The bat smile, dude. It's like, yeah, it's so, like she chose wisely. What? What? <laughs> so that yeah. is the story. That is the movie. That is Batman forever. What did we learn? Amazing. Yeah. What did we learn? Seriously. This comparison. We learned, we learned that Philip will never host again. No, no, no. No, it's, it's okay. okay. You can host again. <laughs> what, what do we learn from these like, connections? The, well, the connection is absolutely bonkers, Philip. I must, I must say, I don't think we can learn because I don't, I don't think <laughs> well, we didn't learn anything from adoption from the second movie. I think from the first one, we kind of it was only a little bit of the story. I guess adoption is good because he made a friend who died then later and made him marry his sister. I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, bad That's good. Come what a, good. Bad can be kind of good. Robin gets nipple suit. <laughs> I guess, what, what can we learn from Nicole Kidman? I guess she's the... Nicole Kidman the didn't age much, I guess. guess. Nicole Kidman can be hot, but also menacing. Uh, I don't know. Probably. She had plastic surgery? Um, what, what are we probably, I think she did, didn't she? I think so. I think so. I think so. I think so. Um, I learned that a... Bat is not a flying rodent. Hmm. Mm. Bats aren't rodents. I also yeah. learned that Batman too. falls for traps <laughs> twice in this film. Number one was oh, yeah, the yeah, acid yeah. Um, vault, which oh, yeah, he just, yeah, with just the guy. jumps in. It's, it's a trap, and he's like, oh, no. oh man, I didn't realize. And then Wait, the second but, part was uh, what he takes, he goes to see Edward Enigma's machine. He's like, I'm looking how to turn this off. 
And she's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> when he, oh, like, oh, when he takes that little tube of power. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then he looks at it and then they're like, we know who you are. He's like, I know. Oh, no. Like when when that when that moment happened, I was, I was getting, I was get, I was losing so much interest. I remember that. Yeah. He walks behind the cardboard set and looks at a TV. <laughs> it was bad. And you know what? Speaking of which, uh, the budget for this film, could you guess? Uh, uh, Sixty-seven. Thirty-five. A hundred million. What? That's Where did it go? The, to Val and Kilmer the, and the, yeah, yeah, the budget for Goldfinch, if let me remind you, is forty-five million. Yeah. And so the box office for the Goldfinch was three point eight. Could change, oh, but oh, maybe oh, not oh, by oh. much. Let me, let me guess. Let me guess for Batman and Batman Forever. The box office was probably two hundred mil. Yeah, probably three, three hundred. You're right, Jacob. Three hundred thirty-six. <gasps> nice. But that's that's domestic, right? I th- I think it's worldwide. I don't know. Oh, Globy. I guess but Globy. I'm, I'm Globy. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Hobie and Globy. I, I, I guess I'm used to like Marvel numbers, which is like comic book movie. Billion. Well, yeah, but that was back in the day, my friend. Oh, that today, yeah, billion. Today, is, but is back the then it was good. Three hundred mil. It's pretty good. Yeah. Good. Good. In nine ninety five money, it's probably like zillions now. In okay, so uh, such a yeah, it's worldwide. I worldwide. have some things to share with you guys. <clears throat> if we're share done with Batman things. Forever. Yeah, we're well, done. Let's, let's, we're done with that nonsense. So number one, uh, we need to give a <laughs> shout out to a very loyal listener, Tim from New Zealand. Yeah, Tim. I would love Tim. to give a shout out to Tim. Tim has Tim been is awesome. our boy. Honestly, Tim has listened Tim's to so boy. much of our stuff on the from our old podcast. I don't know, if, Tim, if you listened to Matrix Minute. I'm not sure. Did he listen to Matrix Minute? I don't you remember. Can tell us. You can yeah, tell, yeah, us. tell us, please. Tell us if you have listened to it. But he's been a really loyal listener and an awesome guy. And I wanted to just give him a shout out. I think it's been a long time coming uh, yeah. in not giving me a shout out. And so I just want That's to say. That's right. I agree. He always agree. listens. He always comments. And he always has like, you know, little links and things we, totally, we, we might be interested in. So And it's so Tim. awesome. So Tim, we salute you. Yeah. All three of us. And we wanted to say thank you for listening for so long. It's it's very it's very awesome of you. I know. Tim, Everyone else is a right moron. Our books. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly, man. And uh, exactly. hopefully, you know, if we ever come to New Zealand, maybe we can hang out. That'd be awesome. You can show us, yeah. show us around. Hole. Yes, exactly. So please, that'd be killer. Uh, the second thing I wanted to say was that we have um, some... Correspondence uh, from a <gasps> or other friend it? of the show. Uh, Correspondence, Frank it? Ireland. Frank, an old and also loyal listener on the show. Yeah, what, what, what did Frank say? Well, he wrote some stuff on Twitter. <gasps> so Frank, Frank wrote on Twitter. He wrote, "When was this? Uh, September twelfth was today. September eighteenth. So fresh, fresh on the tweet, fresh off the press." Frank wrote, "Finally checking out the twofold podcast." I still wonder what the film masterpiece is. I think he was listening to the Hollywood <laughs> episode, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay. Oh, man. And me and Phil wrote a little bit here, nothing much. Uh, Frank quoted some stuff from the, um, from the podcast. Frank Ireland, that's Frank Ireland, Chief Brody Rules. That's right. That's Frank Chief Ireland that Brody I Rules. realized after like months that he's the man who, who made... <gasps> Winter Soldier. <laughs> Winter Soldier. Yeah, 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 and that yeah, Phil yeah. was actually the narration of it. I've seen... Well, I was. That was hilarious. I got a job from that. So Frank wrote <laughs> a awesome. quote from our podcast, and he wrote, Let me talk, guys. Can I talk? Okay, Phil, tell us. Phil, tell us. What about Tarantino? Mood changes. I never liked him. Even as a kid watching Spider-Man, he was too popular. All he said was F-words. And then Frank wrote at the end, he wrote, this is now not quotes, he said, I think yeah, yeah. Phil is afraid slash worried of overhyping or overliking a movie before it has a lasting impact. I don't know if it happened to him as a kid or maybe he sees how most movies don't stay popular past the first year. That would be my guess. That's why no oh, movie wow. is a masterpiece. So Phil, since you're the host, yeah, we would love to ask you the exact same question. Is that's it true? A, is it that's true? a really that's a really well thought out answer though. Because Frank's doing like psychological analysis mm-hmm. of Phil. Exactly. He is. He is psycho um, analysis. It's not uncommon when I'm talking to Jake and Tim. Um, <laughs> we try to analyze you as well. <laughs> so uh, that's what I meant. Um, I think that might play a play a a role, but I don't think it's externally that way. I just feel like 
you know, like I think there's some people who feel like the ceiling can never be reached by anything and there's nothing that's perfect. So it's always, you know, it's always kind of like uh, ebb and flow. Uh, something is, something is good. Something is not so good. Sometimes I no, watch no, it again. Sometimes true. I it's watch it again and, and it's not. No, no, but that's not what we're asking. Like, it's do not. You, yeah. What we're asking, do you have, do you feel like you have. Like on this earth, on this planet earth. <laughs> on this earth. I'm on serious. This earth, like you, you, you have a version of something that is popular by others that you might enjoy, but it, it affects you in a negative way that you are like, oh, just because everyone loves it so much, like, I, I can't love it that much. I don't know. Maybe I'm paraphrasing. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. No, no, Tim, there's um, a lot of those movies for Phil, though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, is, is that, do you think that's a thing? Because like, I, I think that's I'm, what Frank is implying, right? He is. He is. Um... Yeah, I think there are. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's talking about. But I think we we talked mm. about that. But I think the mo more interesting question to me was Frank's original question, which was, "Is there a masterpiece for Phil?" Oh, and, you're right. You're, you're, yeah, you're, because yeah. we talked about the other stuff, and yeah, there's a lot of movies that Phil, you know, doesn't can't get on <laughs> get on board with because other people like them. But that's, the masterpiece that's the question thing, I because had. for instance, let's say like me, you know, as a human on Earth experiencing <laughs> life and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a limited uh, Wow, resource. so you're implying that I don't do that. Well, I don't know, because you don't have a masterpiece. <laughs> you stay in your cave. Well, because, okay, no, so no, 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 I didn't no. know that a requirement for living life means you have to have a masterpiece. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a requirement. But Thanks. But no, listen, you don't have to have a masterpiece. I'm just saying that of all the options that you experience so far in your life, why can't you pick one that's the closest to what you envision What's your to golden be the best? standard? I don't know. Really, like, what, what's the movie like, 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 like the closest? Like, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but just the closest. Like, I'm not telling you you have to have had the answer now. But, but I, saying, unfortunately, but are there some I'm, things. Unfortunately, there's a lot of films that I would have to list, and they're all even. But no, that's not what I'm asking. Not even. I'm saying. But like, that's how it works with me. That's how I judge it. Like, I'm sorry. Personally, like, personally, when you watch it, it well, just connects with you. Yeah. What's what's like the the, the films the comfortablest to you? Not like, like, just, just not, like all the spots. not like objectively you're trying yeah, exactly. to market not with other movies. Like, this is the best of the best and my mom's got to buy it. I mean, it's yeah. more like a movie that speaks to you on a level that's that's beyond reality. You know, yeah, there's like, yeah. it just gets you. Like, you can't explain it. It's irrational. Yeah. Like, you don't have to have an answer now for us. I'm just saying, but are there some movies? Maybe something to think about, you know? Maybe, there might be, yeah. But I, just, I think I it's Batman think now. forever, but he just <laughs> doesn't Shut want to up. admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, 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 you know what we're asking, though, because we're, we're curious. We're not yeah. being mean. We're really being curious because I want to know because this has been the question that I've had all my life. You know, well, you. I don't know, Jacob. I don't know why it's so important to you, but it's, I don't know what I heard. Because I think, okay, here's, here's, here's what, like, I've been, since the beginning of the podcast, I've been pretty open of, like, mentioning, but, like, I gush about Sicario every goddamn episode, right? And that's, like, a, like a, like a top tier movie for me. It's just, you know, or, or, like, The Heat. I love The Heat. Or I want, I love Zombieland. It's just called, or, it's just Heat. No, the, just The Heat. Sorry. Ap apologies. Apologies to the film uh, people. But it's just, <laughs> I, I just never, I never hear you go, go nuts about a movie, like, you know like that like and you know i used to be like big fan of like spielberg movies back in the day when we were kids and everything but i'm just wondering what what is it still now when you're when you're grown up what is it you strive to meet like because like, you're interested there, in making movies as well maybe a hero yeah. you have yeah because let's say i have some personal heroes you know what is what is the masterpiece that you strive to maybe replicate em emulate or, 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 yeah. yeah emulate yeah I don't know. Okay, you, you think well, look, about no, it. Yeah, you think about it. Like I, we weren't going to put you in a spot, but I just want to say, since Frank wrote some stuff, you always yeah. put me on the spot. <laughs> well, that's our <laughs> job. Guys. That's our job. <laughs> We're the two psychologists. Like <laughs> <laughs> armchair <laughs> psychologists. <laughs> armchair. <laughs> armchair drunk. But, but, but think about it. Think about it, Phil. This is your homework. So okay, next, I next, will. Uh, that's my episode, homework. Think, yeah. think of some movies and genuinely, like, don't, don't, don't. Like, here's my here's my requirement for you. Don't have well, my requirement listen, is you don't laugh at what I pick. I'm not laughing no. at, at anything. No one's gonna listen, laugh. I'm laughing at no my stupid laughing. jokes. Yes, exactly. I'm laughing at the stupidity of drinking this beer and stuff like that. Listen, I wanted to say that my requirement would be this. I would love just to hear an answer from you that doesn't have the but attached. You know, like this, 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 but, but objectively, this, 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 but, but no buts. Just like I yeah. love this. Why? I just love it. It's awesome. I love it. This guy when we who put made our it, cards I on, on the table. It. You know, me and Jay, yeah. we're pretty like, love this, hate this, want to yeah. see more of that, one of the, I'm just like, 
I want to know. I like, know and, and, and the thing is, like, the caveat is, like, you don't have to love, like, it 100%. Of course, no one's going to be perfect, you know, like, yeah. from filmmakers to musicians to whatever. But someone it can who's, change. Like, the Your closest. perception can change as well. Exactly. Like, maybe what you love 10 years ago is not what you love right now. But want to know what totally. you love right now. Do it for right Tim. Now. Yeah. Tim, our or, boy, or if you want to know. And Frank. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Tim from New Zealand, <laughs> Frankie boy. Or yeah, maybe, yeah, like, yeah. from five years ago, 10 years ago, maybe you can tell us, like, when I was 14, I just loved this guy. You know, like, he was so awesome. And I just wanted to be like him. You have to have some heroes, right? Yeah. I think we all have heroes. So sure. that's your homework, Phil. <laughs> I assume so. We're, we're the worst. Um, all right. So anyway, you're the host. Well, what, what do you want to say? Yeah, you're the host. We took over you. Yeah, we <laughs> took over you. Yeah. So. <laughs> Stupid armchair psychology. All right. So apparently, I have homework. So we'll find out what I like and who I like. And no, I no, thought no, it was no. clear love, what I like, love, but I love. guess that's the word. What I, I love, like. whom I love, everyone that I love, who you love. specific, who you love. everyone who I strive to be, be like, like. Not everyone, just, just one. whose lessons yeah, I've learned from. People. It's going to be a big list, but you know. No. Phil, we're looking Phil. for some specifics, not a big list. It's, we want to know top who Phil three. is. I, right just, now. I, just find it, I just find it so funny that you guys can't accept the fact that other people have different ways of f- figuring out how to well, express. Because, because I, no, no, that's not it. Because like, I just realized that. I, I'm not the kind of guy who, gets, who is identified by saying, you know, like, I've always had a hero. His name is Nelson Mandela. <laughs> but no, He's, Philip. You know what I mean? Like, you, it's not Philip and his hero Nelson no, Mandela. But, it doesn't but, like, work like that. You love that. movies. You love making yeah. movies. Movies. There's got to be something that something. inspires you, right? Something inspires. Because you. I think I've lost, I've lost. I've lost. I've lost. Like I remember when we were kids, you were always going on about Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis or whatever about these the classic, you know, <laughs> Hollywood movies. And and I could clearly see Lucas. that that's the inspiration. And Lucas, yeah, you could, you would see that. But now. 20 years have gone by. I, 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 I've I lost. I've lost my perception. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and, and, and from the podcast, I still and don't I know what I guess I'm not very vocal about it then. No. But that's what we're asking to be vocal. That's exactly. You can, yes. It can be a hundred people. I don't care who it is. I just want to hear it, my friend. Yes. I just want you to stop being diplomatic and give us the okay. juice. Give us yeah, the no, and, and, just, and, and, and honestly, for, for me, my requirement would be like, no buts. And also throw out the objectivity. Throw it out the window. Screw I would love it. to, but I just, Screw I it. just feel like... No, why? Did you? Are you scared that we're gonna laugh at we're you? Scared? Yeah, a little bit. Well, God damn it, Philip! Phil. <laughs> anyway, this no. has been twofold. No, no, no. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>
Uh, I, I know nothing about it except he's in it. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know. I mean, okay. you know, I, I I couldn't see, you know, Ben Affleck as Batman, but he was a pretty good Batman. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who knows? I mean, I didn't like him as Batman, but... Oh, really? Uh, no, I did. I, I still thought he was a little bit not that great. He's got okay. the great chin, oh. the Batman chin. He got, he has got the chin for sure. I guess. Yeah, you're right. And he's got the voice yeah, as well. I mean, what more could you want? I, he doesn't have the voice. That's the biggest. Problem. I guess. Oh God, those people. <laughs> yeah, let's just like the Nolan movies are great, and I love Christian Bale, but it's like that's so not Batman to me at all. <laughs> like, there's like there's nothing different... Bruce Wayne-y about him. He's just like, oh. No. oh. Um, oh god okay cool okay uh okay let's go back to this and so t-